Last season, when the Scottish Claymores rolled into Frankfurt, we witnessed one of the greatest NFL Europe games in history. The Galaxy and Claymores combined for over 1,000 yards total offense and were just one yard shy of 1,000 for total combined passing yards. The Claymores emerged on top, 42-35 the final score in the shootout at the Waldstadion. But the game will be remembered for one man's performance. Damian Craig entered himself into the Pro Football Hall of Fame with his record 611 yards passing. Today, his replacement, Kevin Daft, who threw for four touchdowns in his debut last week, will aim to emulate Craig's performance against the team that are the current NFL Europe champions. Both teams won their openers and are primed for action. It's the Bravehearts of Scotland at the Frankfurt Galaxy, and it's live here on Sky Sports. Welcome back to the Evolve Stadion, just seconds away from the big kickoff. You know something, Kevin? Some people will just do anything to get into the stadium without paying. I know you do find that hard to believe, but uh, look at uh, that fella here. I mean, this is this is a crazy uh, man, right? Oh, unbelievable. Huge Congo. Well, let me just say he's got some great intestinal fortitude. He certainly does, because you couldn't pay me enough to do that. Well, he doesn't have to pay to get in. Somebody else who doesn't have to pay to get in, of course, is Frankfurt's head coach, Dick Curl, looking relaxed on the sidelines. He's a bit fed up about hearing about Scotland's defence. He's pretty comfortable with his own team. They think they're the greatest thing defensively that ever walked. I think we're pretty good defensively. I'll be disappointed if we don't go out there defensively and step it up big and just prove to people how good we are. They think that we cannot block them. They think that their defensive line will eat us up offensively. I'll be totally disappointed if our offensive line doesn't give us protection to throw the ball and run the football. Just purely pride, just purely pride is what it comes down to. We're close, man. So it's all about pride for two unbeaten teams early in the season. You see the bare foot there of the English kicker, Rob Hart, originally from Southampton in England, a fine city, Kevin. <laughs> you would say that coming from <laughs> Southampton, Nick. And the receivers, Corey Ivey to the left, Jim Cantaloupe to the right. It's week two in the NFL Europe League. A real crackle of anticipation about this one. Hart gets it off to Ivey, who fields at his own four-yard line and works behind the wedge. And is down at about the 20. One yard line. Let's take a look at the Frankfurt Galaxy offense. Normally they go with this two headed monster, both quarterbacks, but Ted White gets the call today. Pat Barnes hurt with rib injuries. Haygood, Fleming, Burrows, Murphy, and Cobdish, the big offensive line that will protect him. And in the backfield, Norman Miller, Thomas Bailey, and Floyd, the wideouts, the veteran German Werner Hippler at tight end. He blocks like a truck. First down at the 21. They start with three wide receivers. And White will throw on first down. He goes over the middle to the big guy, Werner Hippler, who is tackled by the middle linebacker, Matt Finkis, the middle linebacker. Taking a look at the Scottish Claymores. These are the hounds. Chris Ward, Antonio Dingle, Noel Scarlett, Michael Mason. That's the big group up front. The linebackers, Phil Glover from Tennessee, Matt Finkis and Ryan Taylor from the Browns. And in the secondary, Blackwell and Hawthorne on the corners. Blaine McElmurray and Marcus Ray, a pair of hard-hitting safeties. Four yards on the play to Werner Hippler, brings up second down and six. Frankfurt stay with the same formation. And White will throw again on second down, and he can't find Corey Thomas. There is no flag. Thomas with the coverage from Corey Blackwell, and it's incomplete. Man got rocked coming across the middle. Marcus Ray starting this show off early for the Hounds. Number 22 stuck his head in there real nice. So it brings up a third down and six. So far we've got one. So White has thrown on first and second down. And 
he will throw on third down as well. The, the pocket closes, but White takes off and will be close to first down yardage. And that comes as a bit of a surprise because White not known for his mobility, but seeing enough of the field there to pick up a first down. I think it's just great pressure by number 99, Chris Ward, coming off the corner right in there. Forces him up the middle. Makes a good good run for the first down. We good awareness around the ball. We didn't expect it. White, a pocket passer. But he'll take off as well. Now they'll go on the ground. Norman Miller won't get much there. Maybe a couple there. Well, we saw Ted White get that first down. His mobility, a question mark. It's slots but right. Kevin, slots perhaps right. you can talk us through some of the keys, your keys to the game. Absolutely. The number first one, establish the running game. This is huge in order to slow down the house pass rush, take the pressure off the passing game in Ted White. Second, main, main, right here, maintain poise and confidence, especially during adversity. And now that Pat Barnes relegated to an emergency role, Ted White has to go the distance himself. So second and long. Miller in the backfield again, White with a lot of time, and a man, it's short of first down yardage, but Ted White given a lot of protection there, and the ball to the 40-yard line, that will bring up a third down and two, and White looking very composed early on here, Kevin. I think that's part of the game plan, Ted White, I, I think what they want to do is challenge this defensive backfield from the Scottish Claymores. Good, good protection up front. Gives him time to set up in the pocket. He feels no heat in front of his face. Throws a good ball. Third and short, three wide receivers. And White will take off again and picks up another first down. And that's great mobility into Scotland territory before he's tripped up by Dwan Hawthorne. But this is the guy that we said, and Dick Curl said yeah. to us, is the pocket pass. Absolutely. There's the guy we thought was going to be the scrambler. Abs now he is known for his mobility, but never, nobody thought Ted White had this kind of mobility. Everybody, you know, kind of labeled him as a pocket passer. You know where he's going to be. That's the target. He's going to be in the pocket. He's showing very good elusiveness here early in the game. That's two third downs that White has converted on his own. Floyd, wide right. Corey Thomas is wide left. Bailey, the veteran, is in the slot, and we have whistles. Yep, the Hounds had to call timeout. Timeout, Edinburgh. So First. Ted White will go down to timeout. talk to his sideline, and Jim Kreiner, I'm sure, will be uh, assessing things be on his sideline, too. Jim Kreiner in his sixth year as the head coach of the Scottish Claim was a World Bowl winner with Scotland in 1996 and as an assistant in this league with Frankfurt or uh, with Sacramento in 92 and Dick Curl here coach of the year two years running I mean there's no question about his track record I mean he's been there done that you know World Bowl champions and obviously he knows what he's doing well they call him the mad bomber here in Germany because bomber. this is a guy who likes to throw first sure. Uh, they might just run it once in a while just to change it up a little bit, but uh, a dick curl offense is a passing offense. So first down after the Scotland timeout, it's the same formation for Frankfurt with Bailey, the slot receiver, Miller in the backfield, Thomas to the bottom of the screen, Todd Floyd to the top, White drops again, good protection. Can't find Mario Bailey, it's incomplete, that's second down. A bit of extracurricular stuff going on between Rashid Simmons and Josh Kobdich. Up in the trenches, I mean, stuff goes on up in the trenches. Everybody is trying to establish the physical aspect of the game, and it's not, it's not a pretty thing. It's not a pretty thing. I mean, it's pretty ugly up there in the trenches, and tippers get heated. A bit of pushing and shoving. Sure, didn't come to button, no. Let them play. Let them do it. But I tell you, the, the Hounds at the moment are on the leash. This Frankfurt offensive line doing a pretty good job early on here. Mm. Second down. White with time again. Oh, Five Floyd gets picked off Matt Finkus. And Finkus is dragged down at the 46-yard line. That ball up in the air. Floyd couldn't hang on. He's drawn double coverage anyway. And Matt Finkus, who's got half his family here watching this game, comes up with the big turnover. 
top Floyd, bless his heart. I think he would have had the ball, but he got tattooed by about two or three Scottish Claymores, and then Matt Fink has had the, just the awareness, football awareness, and was able to pull that bad boy in. So Matt Finkis, the returning veteran. Yeah, big play. And you know what? They didn't make a lot of big plays last week as a defense. You know, as far as turnovers and interceptions, that's critical right there. That's critical because the Galaxy was driving. So Kevin Daft, who started slow last week, leads the offense. And the swing pass to Damon Gibson. And Gibson makes something out of nothing and will pick up five yards. Yes, Kevin Daff, the third stringer with the Tennessee Titans last year. His very first play from scrimmage last week, an interception. And after that, simply sensational. The offensive line, Jason Tenno filling in at left tackle. Cavill, Newell, Gamble and Green rounding out that quintet. Cooper and Gibson, the wideouts. Willie Tate, the H-back. Ricky Brady at tight end. And Aaron Stecker, who had a couple of touchdowns out of the backfield is the lone running back. We saw a lot of different formations from Scotland offensively last week. Second down. The give is to Stecker, and Stecker just stumbles, and then manages to get forward a little bit. Marcus Richter was the first man there, the big German, and that'll bring up third down. Defensively for Frankfurt, Preston, Taylor, Davis, and Hirscher are on the defensive line. The linebackers anchored by Sean Banks from the Bears in the middle, flanked by Stan Gibbs and Kevin Homer, Corey Ivey and Quincy Coleman on the corners, Tony Moranto and Jim Cantaloupe rounding out the defensive backfield. No gain on the play from Stecker. That brings up third down and five, and the noise level cracked up a gear or two here in the Vols Stadion. Daft will throw, and he's hit from behind and down. Big hit, Henry Taylor, the man from the Detroit Lions. Came right around Jason Tinner, number 77. Just didn't hold his block quite long enough. He made, let's look right in here, and he just didn't hold his block that long. He just was able to come around, stay alive. And, I mean, obviously the quarterback has got to get rid of the ball quicker than that. Daft has got to throw the ball faster. So, three and out from the Claymores. Yeah. John Ballantyne from Melbourne, Australia comes in to kick it away to Corey Ivey, who waits at his own 10-yard line. And Ballantyne, who can boom him, has got tremendous height on that one. And it goes straight into the end zone. So, scoreless here in the Vols Stadion. 8.24 left, first quarter. We're going to take a short break. Back in just a couple of moments. Call us here at the Vault Stadion, but I tell you something, Kevin. All the talk in camp and certainly talking to Dick Curl this week was that Ted White was a pocket passer who didn't right. like the takeoff. Right. He scrambled twice and converted two third down situations. And there's the scrambler, yeah. Pat Barnes. He will mm. only come in if something happens to White. Barnes has a rib injury. He wants to play. Dick Curl has told him he better bide his time. First down. The three receiver package in again, and White with that cannon of an arm. He's got a man, but he's out of bounds. Kendrick Nord was the intended receiver, the man that they think can be the big deep threat. Central McClellan was matching him step for step, but we saw the arm of Ted White he there. sure did. I mean, you can see why this guy, I mean, he does have a bazooka. He set up in the pocket very nice and just launched one like 45, 50 yards down the field, just a little bit outside of that, out of the, outside the playing field, but he's got an arm. Well, there's White's passing numbers so far. But two first downs on the ground. Now the draw play. Michael Blair gets a carry and will pick up five yards before he's tackled. The change up there. Norman Miller was in the backfield on the last series, but Michael Blair from Ball State getting the carry there. This fellow's a big physical specimen as well. You know, Dick Curl had made the made the mention that they had to establish the run game to take the pressure off the passing game and that is just a prime example you know you go Trey meanwhile we've got injury. an injured Claymore down right. there oh that, uh, that's yeah. Antonio Dingle that's a big key for the interior line too he's the leader of the hounds up front real vocal leader real productive player last week six tackles couple sacks big time game Ooh. I tell you you see a player lying in that position as well Kevin that doesn't suggest well, Anything very good. I don't know. I'm, I'm just glad he's not holding a knee or something. Maybe he just had the wind knocked out of him. But they're not looking around his knees and giving him the knee deal. So, oh, 
I don't know. They rolled him over now. Shoulder, maybe. He may have got a stinger. You know, a burner? Yeah. It's a temporary thing. You stick your head into people, shoots down their arm, and it, like, totally goes limp and numb on you, but then it eventually comes back and you get your strength back. Well, there's Jim Tom Sula, the defensive line coach, looking on with some concern. Let's see if we can see what happened there to Dingle. Right in there. Let's kind of eyeball him and see if we can see what he hurt on this play. It, he's just, re oh, may have landed on his shoulder. He may have just kind of tweaked his delt a little bit. He, he'll be all right. The hound will be back in the game. Yeah. It's going to take more than that to keep this hound in the kennel. But I tell you what, you yeah. talk about the hounds. We're not seeing much from Jim Tom Sealer's group early on here. No, I, I tell you what. Uh, Jim Jim Kreiner really praised his hounds last week of being physical and working hard. And today, you know, they have yet to step up and make a play. Now it's the Frankfurt offense that's got to make the play. Third down and five. Three-man rush. White with a lot of time again. The swing pass, a flag comes in. Michael Blair spins away from one tackler. Looks like he's going to be short of first down yardage. Phil Glover and Hurley Tarver were there, but there's a flag as well. So we will be in the hands of our referee, Peter Morelli. Good second effort from Blair. Mm. And they're talking this one over. And both uh, offense and defense looking on a little concerned here. Very often the, the players on the field know what the call is going to be, but uh, this one seems to be uh, being questioned by both sides. They're kind of looking toward the Scotland Claymore side of football here. Holding. It's a hold against the defense. Yeah. You know, that last play, the Claymores only rushed three down linemen, and they dropped eight in pass coverage. That's a nice little change up for them, especially if, if, if Ted White is finding him, his rhythm throwing the ball that way. Put more people in pass coverage. There are two fouls on the play. Illegal content, number 26 on the defense, holding 43 on the defense. The legal contact will be declined. The holding will be accepted. Five yard penalty. First down. Antonio Dingle has a shoulder sprain, we're hearing. He's getting treatment on the sidelines and. Uh, He's lifting his arm up. He's fine. He's a warrior. He's a hound. That stinger, it'll wear off. He'll be back in there. Well, Dick Curl, we heard him challenging his offensive line in the uh, pregame talk. This defense may be getting all the uh, publicity for Scotland, but uh, he said it's time for his guys to rise up to the challenge. So far, so good. First down, Frankfurt at the 30-yard line. White will throw it again. And he's got a man again. Kendrick Nord will pick up five yards before he's pushed out of bounds by Central McClellan. That'll bring up second down and five. They they said to us that they really want to get Kendrick Nord involved in this offense. And that was a pretty safe route, too. That's just a little five-yard turnout route. Real safe route, real safe pass. <clears throat> but it'll just get Nord involved. He's a real mm. burner, this fella. The word on him is the man from the Baltimore Ravens, he's got potential. Mm. I always hate that because potential that, means you haven't mm, done anything, right? P word. Yeah. Second and five. They see something. Let's see what they see. Well, the pressure comes this time. A flag comes in as White goes down, tackled from behind. Phil Glover from the Tennessee Titans making the play. Glover had a quietly impressive game last week for the Claymores, and White felt the heat, but we have two flags yeah, on the field. could be two cases of, of holding. Let's look way up here in the, in the corner. I think they're showing it a little too quick there. I think they read it, and then, you know, the quarterback audibled and tried a three-step drop, and a couple guys got held on it. I think we're going to have holding on the Claymores. There are two fouls on yeah. the play. Holding number 56 on the defense. That's holding Ryan Taylor. Number 29 on the defense. And that's Central McClellan. We'll accept the holding by number 29 on the defense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Mm. 
Well, that's going to drive Jim Kreider up the wall. That's two defensive first downs by penalty that the Claymores have given up. Yeah, they're making some mistakes right now. It just kind of, you know, it makes you wonder whether their heads are in the game, whether they feel a little pressure, maybe they feel the curveball thrown to them that uh, Ted White's a quarterback back there and he's already scrambled for a couple first downs. So they need to come together and play like they did last week. They're kind of playing discombobulated now. Todd Floyd, wide left at the bottom of the screen. Watch out for Mario Bailey in the slot. The, the draw play catches him once again. Michael Blair blasts his way through for five yards. Tackled by the middle linebacker, Matt Finkus. That's going to be a... That's going to be a big play for these guys, Frankfurt. I think because they're going to threaten with the pass and the pass and pass, and then, you know, hand it off with that little quick draw. That's a good three to five yards because the Hounds are just trying to pin their ears back because, you know, they're expecting pass from Ted White. Well, Dick Curl said it. We must establish the run, and here they go again, and Blair getting extended playing time here. He'll be very close to first down yardage there. Michael Blair, who didn't see too much playing time last week in the win against Berlin. Norman Miller was the featured back. Yeah, Michael Blair running the ball as a horse. He just takes the ball on a straight ahead handoff. There's just hey, no draw, no nothing. Uh, Coach Curl said he wanted to establish the run, and I, I think right now you can see that they're, they're getting this offensive line going and teeing off on the defensive line of the Hounds. Oh, look at those numbers. So on bad substitution, and there's going to be a flag. Three flags in the defensive backfield. They are discombobulated. There, there's some confusion going on of the defense of the Claymores right now for one reason or another. That was a bad substitute, substitution situation with Rashid Simmons, number 93, and Chris Ward, number 99. Somebody needs to take charge up there. Antonio Dingle needs to get back in there or something. Matt Finkus needs to stand up and get everybody snapped back into this game now. It's Peter Morelli again. There are 12 men Oh, on that the field. really drives the on coach the defense, crazy. Number 29 did not get off the field in time. Five-yard penalty. And that's first three down. first downs in a row by defensive penalties now. We're seeing a total different defense right now from the Claymores. I know Coach Kreiner is livid, but we are seeing a total different defense. The Hounds of Scotland are, are not playing up to what they established last week, that's for sure. Uh, what did we say last week, Kevin? Talk is cheap, they've yeah. got to deliver. Not much delivering here. Still early days, still scoreless. But the Galaxy offensively trying to keep the Claymores off balance, and they're doing it on the ground once again. Just pounding away at that big defensive line, Dick Curl. He said right, he'd do it. It's yes. right out, right out, 860 Speedy Rio. Speedy Rio. Yeah. Yeah, your, your guess is good as mine on that one, Nick, my man. Well, we haven't had a pass for a while, and this is a pass happy offense. And Kendrick Nord at the top of the screen is the burner. Second down and seven. And White will throw over the middle. First down for the Frankfurt Galaxy. Justin Swift, the backup tight end, picks up 12. Tackled by Marcus Ray coming up from the safety, but a Frankfurt first down. Very nice crossing route underneath the coverage. Just kind of like a little tight end drag underneath. Good poise in the pocket. You'll see him just kind of come right across there and just kind of drags him across. Matter of fact, that looks like that's man-to-man -man coverage there by Marcus Ray. Just got caught behind it. Four wide receivers in. The draw play again. Good. Not much. Just a yard. Now see, the Hounds are going to eventually hone up on this draw stuff. Now, a couple of draws have already bit the Hounds earlier, and that's good game planning by the Galaxy, because they know the Hounds are going to be pinning their ears back. But eventually, you keep running that thing like that, the Hounds are going to start eating that. Well, Chris Ward has checked out of the lineup for the Scottish Claymores. Antonio Dingle is back, back in. in. The four wide receiver formation still there. Blair alone in the backfield. Second and long at Frankfurt. And White with the deep drop and lots of time again. And he goes over the middle looking for Todd Floyd. That one's incomplete. White got hit Oof. as he threw the yes, ball. Sir. Got a bit nice. of pressure on him. Nice rush 
from Michael Mason up top, I believe on Josh Cobdish. Let's, let's go, let's look right up in here and you'll see Michael Mason just do a great inside move. They're all the way up top, he makes an inside move. There you go, gets a little pressure on him. Yeah, you know, he didn't really get a crushing shot, but he let, he let Ted White know he was there. That's important. Tenth play of a drive that began at the Frankfurt 20. Third and long. Critical. Can the Scotland defense make a stand here? Can Ted White keep the drive alive? White has time. Looks for Corey Thomas, broken up. And the Claymores have a player hurt, and it's Corey Blackwell, I believe, who was there to break it up, and Central McClellan is calling immediately for Blackwell to receive some assistance. There was some popping. Let's watch right here. There was some popping going on right there. He goes right behind the bump and run, kind of trails him a little bit. Corey Blackwell trailing him, and the safety comes over. Marcus Ray and levels him, levels him. It might have hurt his own man. I tell you, Marcus Ray went straight into Ooh. the knees. Quite accidentally, Ooh. so often you see the worst injuries Ooh. on a football field is when you get two defensive guys colliding, and that was a horrible collision. The competitive nature of this league, just the physical aspect of this league is that of the NFL, and that play proves it. Well, amazingly, he's back on his feet, Corey Blackwell. The 157 left, first quarter. The defense is staying in the game, and by the way, Antonio Dingle, number 74, is back in the game. He did have just a little burner, and he's a tough kid. I played with him, so it's good to see him back in the game. But the defense, the number one defense is staying in. The punch safe unit is staying in. Could be a chance for a little trickery from the Galaxy. Well, Nick Gallery from the Chiefs will punt it away. Damon Gibson is the deep man. A great kick from Gallery. That'll go out of bounds at the seven yard line. I've just marked it at the eight, but nevertheless, Gallery came in and did his job, and the Claymores offensively will be pinned deep in their own territory. And Kevin Daft will have the plays on his wristband, which is commonplace in this league. Especially, especially with the crowd noise, and they prepared for that this week. Coach Kreiner had speakers set up on the field, had those guys wide open and blaring to simulate the hostile environment, the crowd noise that they were going to hear here, here in Vault Stadium in Frankfurt. I don't think you could ever simulate this noise. It, right. It has to be heard to be believed. And it's up there now. First down. Daft hands it off, and Stecker has got nowhere to run and nowhere to hide, and he's tackled from behind by David Hulsher. Second and long. Good mobility by number 91 from the back side. You know what? In the front side, defensive end, Charles Preston, number 97, just stuffed up the hole on the front side. He does a great job up here, stuffing up and right in there, gets the man turned upfield, and just good hustled right down the line. Number 91 gets an on tackle right there. Good. That's that's good team team defense right there. Good hustle. No Tackle one, for loss. No one's talked about this Frankfurt defensive right. front. You think they're sensitive to that? <laughs> Three yard loss. Second and 13. Daft from his own end zone swings it out to Stecker and Stecker just stumbles again. He stumbled earlier. Yes. Get back to the line of scrimmage and no further. Yes. That's going to bring up third and long. Maybe they were looking for the linebacker match matchup or whatnot, but there was a DB out there in the flat with him. And I've seen a couple people slip right. on this field today. And Stecker may not be as elusive, quick, shaking bake, you know, like he was last week, because he is slipping on this on this field here in Frankfurt Four today. One. One. And also, of course, Frankfurt have had a chance Play to look right. at him on film as well, which is something draw, Amsterdam weren't able to do because the Claymores did not come out of camp showing what Aaron Stecker could do. Now everybody knows after what he did last week against Amsterdam. Big third and long. Daft again Good from his protection. own end zone. He's got a man, but a long way to go for Willie Tate, and he's going to be well short of first down yardage. Dragged out of bounds by Kevin McCullough, the outside linebacker, and that will send John Ballantyne of the punting unit out. For a no-name defense of Frankfurt, I know the Hounds got a lot of publicity coming into this game, and, you know, Frankfurt Galaxy's really not known for his defense. I mean, they're playing very well today as a defensive unit. 91, he ought to make something happen. He's wearing the right jersey, isn't he? That's 91? right. That's right. I wondered how long it would take you for you to, for you to spot a number 91 out there. <laughs> I've expected a couple That's of sacks. The end of the first quarter. 
And that will do it for the first quarter. So John Ballantyne will go to work when we return. Scoreless here at the Vault Stadion. It's the Frankfurt Galaxy, nothing. The Scottish Claymores, nothing. Welcome back to the Vault Stadion. Nick Halling and Kevin Green. No score, the Galaxy and the Claymores. That's the good news for Scotland. They've mm. barely been on the field offensively, but they haven't given up a point yet. No, I mean, they're not playing bad, Scotland. They're just not making anything happen right now. Ballantyne gets off another high one. Corey Ivey will fancy a return. A great kick. Fielded at the 33. Ivey steps away from one man. Then Roel Blenman brings him down with an assist on the play from Tremaine Allen. Ivey can be dangerous, but Ballantyne getting terrific hang time on that one. And Dick Curl's offense will have good field position. Yes. Oh, but uh, there's a flag down there. Deep at about the 12 yard line. And Dick Curl's saying, well, they can, have, they can kick that one again. They can punt it again. Maybe someone left a little early. Well, that's a common, mm. that's a common flag in this league. Illegal man downfield. We hear that all the time on punts. Ineligible member of the kicking team. Number 55 on the defense. Gosh, Nick, you've got a crystal ball over there. I've just heard it a thousand <laughs> times before, Kevin. This time it's Brian Smith. Just a little anxious to get down and cover the kick, knock someone out. I've been there, done that. I tell you what, Jim Kreiner must be pretty concerned at the number of yellow flags we've seen in this ball game so far. Refs, you know, those guys, the officials are over here working on their craft as well, and things are starting off a little sloppy, and they've got to hit some people with some flags. Can't let all the holding go on. Of course, linebackers never hold, do they? Of course not, no. Nope. Uh, I'll tell you something, Ballantyne's got to watch it. He's right at the back of the end zone there. Mm. And you can see the referee, Peter Morelli, they're looking, watching his heels. Ballantyne will step forward and oh, gets off a horrible no. kick this time. And that penalty really was costly. Oh. Ballantyne, whose problem is consistency, just shanked one. Oh. Good That's check. given the Galaxy oh. the ball at the 30-yard line oh. of the Claymores. That's I, huge. I want to strangle him from up here, Nick. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. I mean, this is a serious gut check time for the Hounds. That turned into a 30-yard penalty. Oh. And Ted White and the Galaxy... Well, they spotted it at the 33, but whichever way you stack it up, they're in great field position here. And they've got to take advantage of this field position right here and not just put three on the board. They need to put some serious points on the board. Mario Bailey in the slot. A little audible, huh? Oh, little movement by the left offensive tackle. That was a long wait, and all the flags come in. Rob Bollinger, number 79. I saw a little hitch in his rock. And I played with that kid, too. And you know, get coming, Rob. Come on now. <laughs> I know it. He was with the Panthers here a couple you, years ago. You just watch offensive Fire linemen, staff. don't you? Well, you see them. You see them flinch, and you're all over them. <laughs> no, you're right. I move on first move. Yeah. I mean, if they blink, if they even breathe too deep, I'm gone. But Rob got busted on that one, yeah. I mean, that happens, you know. He's coming in, he's all geeked up. He's, ro he's rotating in there with number 77, Jay Hay Haygood. And he's just, you know, trying to get in the mix and just a little premature. So, second and 15 after the false start. The formation doesn't change. And again, they wait a long time and the pressure comes and White goes down. Killed Chris too long. Ward blasted his way through and they'll tack on another eight yards and that's going to bring up third and half a mile i don't i, I don't think it was so much of the hounds making something happen is that ted white he just didn't throw the ball he just didn't throw the ball he just held on to the ball too long you got a guy getting cut been walking cut and gets up and makes a sack you got to throw the ball you just got to get rid of the ball a little bit quicker than that or the hound's going to bite you Ted White got bitten there, third down and 22. In fact, no, it's a repeat of second down, excuse me, after the penalty. The pressure came and White's got a man. Corey Thomas with a great catch over the middle. Will be just short of first down yardage, 21 yards. Corey Blackwell and Blaine McElmurray converging. But Thomas just hung in the air and dragged that thing in.
Right over Matt Finkus. I, I think Matt Finkus might have taken a bite on that bait on that short route, jumped short route when he should have continued to get depth in the defense. The ball went right over his head. Thomas from the Dolphins. Ball, ball, ball. The ball is loose. Who's got it? The flags come in late on the Claymore side. There's still no indication on who's got the ball. Bad center quarterback exchange on that one. That ball just like dropped right down between Ted White's legs. And that was third and inches as well, but let's see what the call is. Just a quick snap, huh? Trying to catch him off guard, catch your hands off guard. Making, themselves diff making life difficult for themselves on this drive. Personal foul. Personal foul. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Unnecessary roughness. Number 55 on the Oh, defense. that's Brian Smith again. And that really is a big penalty. First down. You know what? I cannot understand that as a player. I cannot understand people losing their poise and confidence and just doing that personal foul stuff. You got to maintain your poise. And the refs always catch the second guy anyway. It's not the first guy that throws the first punch and gets busted. It's the guy that retaliates and whatnot. And on third and short, and with a bad exchange, Brian Smith, who's already caused one penalty that turned out to be huge, gets tagged for another one. First down, and they give the ball to Norman Miller, who's back in. And Miller with a great second effort, churning and fighting for yardage. With the hounds yapping at him. Frust frustration by the hounds right now. And you know the offensive line from the galaxy got to be grinning a little bit because they got the hounds on the heels. Antonio Dingle stood, stood up. Justin Burroughs very nice. It just didn't come off quick enough and make that play. Second down. Well, the Claymores did not give up a touchdown last week. And the Amsterdam Admirals were in the red zone three times. Can the Claymores hold them here? Second down. White, play action. White rolls. Wide Flash open. Has a man. Todd Floyd, touchdown Frankfurt. Nice bootleg play action pass. Consequently, it sucked up the entire hound. Nice play. Todd Floyd just kind of hanging in there and sneaking out late. That's just a good design play. Gut check time for the hounds. Listen to the crowd. They love it. They're rocking. Todd Floyd had five catches to lead the Galaxy last week in Berlin. He didn't get a touchdown. That's his first of the season. And one of Kevin Green's favorite players in this league, Ralph Kleinman, is on <laughs> to attempt the extra point. Uh oh And he's good. Barely. And the Frankfurt Galaxy have breached the Hounds of Scotland and have taken a seven-point lead. And they're rocking and rolling here in the Vault Stadion. It's Todd Floyd right there just scoring the touchdown. Last year he was over here, he didn't really take it serious. This year he's more serious about it. Here you'll see 22 Marcus Ray come on off the corner with the corner blitz. And his job right there, I guarantee you, is to check for that bootleg. Because he's no way, he is no way going to catch that ball if this handoff going into the other side of the, the football. He's got to check for that naked bootleg like that. That he just unfortunately did not play within the scheme of the defense and it cost him. But worth repeating again, Kevin, that penalties really mm. killed the Claymores on that last series. Dion Mitchell is back deep. That's a change up. And a high kick is not going to reach Mitchell. Blackwell fields at the 25 and looks to try and turn the corner. And he slips this time. We'll pick up maybe a yard, Matt, uh, before he's tackled by Sean Banks, the middle linebacker, coming in and uh, making the play. But Dick Curl, not only must he be happy with his offense that's just hit the end zone, he must be delighted with his defense that has silenced Kevin Daft on the, right. the, the, the offense so far. Things last week might have been a little too easy for number 13, Kevin Daft. He's going to have to deal with some adversity here. I mean, it was kind of like a cakewalk for him last week with the Admirals, the four touchdown passes he threw. But now they're behind. He knows his defense is struggling. He needs to take it on his shoulders and really lead this offense now. 
Tremaine Allen is the motion man. They fake the handoff up. A flag comes in and he's down, tackled from behind. Sean Banks will be credited with the sack if the play stands up. We will have to wait for that one. But whatever you, whichever way you look at it, Kevin, this Claymore's offense is really struggling. I like the way Frankfurt is throwing some curveballs at the Claymores. They just brought a corner blitz and... Uh... Offside, number 20 on the defense. Five yards. That's penalty. Kevin Brooks, the First corner. Down. And that really helps the Claymores. They needed a break. He was a little anxious. He might have been the one flying off the corner trying to get a hold of Kevin Daft. Dick Curl says, no, it couldn't have been. <laughs> the crowd is starting to pick it up a little bit. Kevin Daft's having a hard time with his, uh, his, his ear, ear, earphone. I'll tell you something, Kevin. It's, it's, it's a party animal crowd, but they understand the game of football, and they understand when opponents are under pressure yep. as well. And the Claymores are under pressure here. First and five. Allen, the motion man. Blackwell with the handoff. Aaron Stecker runs into a brick wall. Nowhere to go. Well, Kevin, I mean, you talked about the keys for victory for Frankfurt. Let's, let, let's look at what you think the Claymores have to do to win this thing. First of all, you got Stecker on linebackers. The coaching staff feels it's a win situation when they put Stecker on a, on a linebacker, and it should be, but Frankfurt is aware of this. Number two, Draft. He's got to do something now. I mean, he had a great day last week, but now he's living through adversity. He's got to come up and play. The DBs have got to play better. They've got to rise up to the challenge of the wide receivers from Galaxy. Cooper. Wide right, Sanford, who's the motion man. Daft with all kinds of time and now space in front of him. We'll pick up first down yardage, pays the price. Very, let him up, man. Let him very up. nice. The space ahead of him and he said, I've got to get a first down and he does. And that takes the pressure off Jim Cantaloupe coming up and making the stop. Nick, pretty good presence right there. Okay, we saw him elude that corner blitz a couple plays ago and now we see him eluding a little more pressure, feeling everybody's kind of covered, feel the pressure going around him. He takes the ball vertical, vertical for a first down. Not bad. And as you told me before, Kevin, there is nothing that drives a defense crazier than yep. a quarterback that will take off. Well, it just lends a new Black dimension to the offense. First down. Stecker tries to use his speed. They're containing him pretty well so yep. far, Kevin. They have not been able to spring Aaron Stecker free at all. Tony Moranto, the safety, coming up and saying, I'll give you a couple, but no more. He can't just chugging around the corner to shot out of a cannon. Sean Banks dove at him, missed him, and then got wrapped up. You'll just see him come right out here just screaming. Spilled by the, by the defensive end, Charles Preston to the ball, goes to the outside. Good pursuit, very nice pursuit. And the second man there was Sean Banks. Banks seems to be in on every play at the moment, the middle linebacker for the Galaxy. That field is gonna be a problem for Aaron Stecker today, his footing. Stecker and minus yardage. Mitchell is the motion man. Cobbs will track him. The boot. And now Daft with a lot of work to do. He gets a block from Ricky Brady up front and gets past the tackle. Great block from the big tight end Ricky Brady. Allowed Daft to get extra yardage. 15 you, yards. You normally don't see a right-handed quarterback boot around to his left side because in order to throw the ball, he's got to square back up to the field. So this really throws the defense a curveball. You'll see him boot around this side. Now this is a right-handed quarterback. You see, now you usually don't see this because he's got he's got to square back up to throw it. But then he just tucks it and runs. He sees it, he sees a lot of green over there. Runs for a first down. Good decision. And I'll tell you what, Vince Alcaldi, the offensive coordinator of Claymores, he's digging into the box of tricks here. But the drive stays alive. They're in Frankfurt territory for the first time in the ball game. Daft will throw on first down. Has time. Can't find a man. It was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Looked like big Charles Preston from the Baltimore Ravens got a hand up. Good blocking by that offensive line, the Claymores. They're giving Daft time to set up, read a couple, you know, go to his first, go to the second read. There, I think he was going to throw a strike, but the ball was batted down. So I think it was some pretty good protection by the old line. Deuce left, 33, X curl, all one. X curl, I think that may be a pass. What do you think, Nick? Oh, don't ask me, Kevin. <laughs> Get that crystal ball out. What does it say, X curl? <laughs> Second down and 10 after the incompletion. Daft will throw. It's a swing pass, but they can't that, that was it with Ben Snell. Yeah. It's incomplete, just out of the grasp of the two-year veteran. Yep, Sean Banks was on his horse. 
too. He was on his horse to catch Ben Snell kind of flaring out. Dick Curl's defense, which really is inspired by Sean Banks. Critical down here. Every down is critical. The third and ten, you'd love to convert here. Obviously. Yeah. Quieting his quiet, quiet his crowd down a little bit. The only thing that's worked for Scotland offensively so far is Daft taking off on his own. Stecker is bogged down and the passing game's not clicking. Daft will hope to put that right here. And he's got Stecker, and Stecker has to get past the first man and doesn't. He's brought up short. Great tackle from Corey Ivey. Good open field tackle. And Ivy, if he doesn't make that tackle, it's a first down. I think that's a real nice open field tackle with a real quick man that has the ability to juke and just, just, just juke you and shake you. He breaks down right there and just goes for it and wraps up real nice. Good job by Corey Ivy. On fourth down, John Ballantyne will come in, but uh, this could be trick play territory as well. Valentine will kick it away and he will try and do what Nick Gallery did. And Roel Blenman is down there and oh, they can't quite keep it out. Nope. Great effort yep. by the special teams coverage guys. Chris Bain, number 46, a diving effort, but it's in vain. So the Frankfurt Galaxy will have the ball at their own 20 yard line. They have a seven point lead as well. We'll be back. Scotland coach Jim Kreiner performing hey, surgery hey, on the sidelines. Right he cannot down. be a very happy man right now. No, absolutely not. And he's trying to get things squared away with his offense right now. He is taking it on his shoulders. He's kneeling down. He's got the board out. He's doing the mojo. He's drawing with the pin. And, and obviously, the Galaxy is throwing this team some curveballs. He's trying to get these guys squared away now. And this young man, Jim Tomasula, he cannot be happy. And he's a guy that's going to put a foot up with someone's colon if they don't, you know, play within the school. <laughs> excuse me, play within the scheme. And I know he is highly motivated. I know he's doing that to the to the Hounds. He's the D-line coach. He's the uh, keeper of the Hounds. They show blitz on first down the Claymores. And White gets rid of it. Michael Blair can't get past the open field tackle from Phil Glover. There it is. You got to do that as an outside backer in this league. I mean, I. I know a lot of guts and glory come on sacking the quarterbacks coming off the short corner, but you got to be able to pick up. You'll see him coming out the corner here. Here he is right here. Let's watch this young man right here. No. But anyway, you'll see the crossing the field. There he is, Phil Glover coming into view, makes a good open field tackle. And it's just not all guts and glory of sacking quarterbacks. You got to make these big plays right there. Second and long. White again. Pressure. The pressure gets away from Rashid Simmons and then just has to get rid of it. Simmons stayed with him. He had the hounds of Scotland snapping at his heels there, Ted White. Starting to snarl a little bit. Oh, yeah. Starting to snarl. Now, this guy really, see, now, Noel Scarlett's getting all fired up in there, get, getting it freaking barking, now, excuse me, but he is drooling and slobbering already because they know that this guy, Ted White, is not a mobile guy, and he just wants to hang in there and be a pocket passer, and when you do get him out running around looking for receivers, he's not as productive, he's not as good. Gotcha. Third down. Can the Hounds hold firm here? The pressure comes. Ooh. White has to get rid of it. He's got a man, but it's well short of first down yardage. The old campaigner, Mario Bailey, just had nowhere to go, and uh, Ted White just got tattooed. M Matt Finkus, I think, just absolutely broke him. Broke him like a toothpick, and that's what you got to do. That's exactly what you got to do. And it was a minimal gain, so that pressure was worth it. Boom! Just plant him like a tulip. That's exactly what you have to do. Because now you get the quarterback kind of back there shaking and quaking. You know, you don't know where the pressure's coming from. Now you're getting underneath the skin. They changed it up, didn't they? Defensively, and that brings out Nick Gallery, who's a big guy. He's six foot four and 240. That's big enough to be a linebacker. High snap, and Gallery does well just to bring that in and get rid of it and gets off a terrific kick that has Damon Gibson backpedaling to the 22. And Gibson is down at the 31-yard line. I know you never like to give kickers and punters too much credit, but Nick Gallery did a heck of a job there. Especially under the adversity, and you're right, I'm not too quick to get on the jock of a kicker. I'll be the first to agree. 
But I tell you what, he made a great play by not letting that one that one go in the end zone. Some flags on the play too. Back at the line of scrimmage. Well, I wonder what this one's going to be. A flag on a punt. Hmm. <laughs> What's the crystal ball saying? <laughs> Illegal man down there. Yeah, field? the old ineligible uh, man or whatever. Illegal man. Ineligible there member of the kicking Swami. team, number 23. Downfield prior to the kick. Anthony Five yard Cobbs, penalty. The guilty the party. Fourth down. Huge play of the game. I mean, huge play of the game by a kicker. This thing is four, four feet over the guy's head. Nice little vertical there. That could have been a huge play. That, that could have been a huge play. And he boomed a 50-yard punt after that. So I may be warming up to kickers a little bit. No, oh, this you one. Need... I tell you, he's a big guy. He looks yeah. you eye to eye. He's a big fella. This fella doesn't. Damon Gibson, he's only 5'9". I look him eye to eye. In fact, I look down on Damon Gibson. That doesn't happen too often. Now, the last time we saw a flag on a punt, it turned into a effectively a 30-yard penalty. Mm. What damage is done here? Gallery, no problem with this one. They're trying to block it. But Gibson will call for the fair catch at the 48-yard line of the Scottish Claymores. Smart move. Smart move. He got. He has the ball at the that, roughly the 50-yard line. I think that's a smart move. Good field position for the offense of the Claymores. Now they need to make something happen. Daph needs to come in here. He needs to take control of this offense and take him down. Put some points on the board. Get this thing. Get this thing going. The big surprise for me so far, Kevin. Aaron Stecker. Where yeah. is he? Well, I think he's having a problem with his footing. I mean, he is nowhere near the same on this turf today that he was last week. And I walked on the turf earlier, and I didn't see, but I wasn't wearing cleats. But this is a major problem for Stecker, the turf. First down. Willie Tate goes in motion. Booted. Play action. Daft. Fires has a man. It's big Ricky Brady, the tight end, who gets past one tackler and scrambles down the sideline. And Ricky Brady, who had a touchdown, Last week, pushed out of bounds by Bobby Howard. 26 yards on the completion. You'll see Tony Ranto come off right here in number 21 and just get sucked in right there. And again, people are not playing within the design and the scheme of the defense. If 21 Tony Maranto would have been honed up, he would have drilled Kevin Daft. Stan Gibbs was the linebacker he beat. You just sense a change in momentum here, and these fans. They're trying to lift their team. Stecker working inside, gets past David Hulsher, will pick up six yards before he's tackled. I think that's the first yes. positive carry yes. for Stecker in the ball game. That wasn't a bad little cut, too. Maybe he's starting to get a feel of the turf, the grass. And that was a nice little, nice little cut. Kept his feet under him. Darted there forward for about five yards. You're gonna go deuce right, queen. This is huge. Yeah, this is huge on. for the claimers to right now come back and draw some blood. The ball spotted at the 20-yard line. Make it second down and five. Daft will throw. He swings it to Stecker, who is flattened. What a great open field tackle again by Corey oh, Ivey, who's hers. He's nicked. Ivey read that one all the way, and they'll lose five yards. Shoulder. That's a big play from Corey yes. Ivey. Yes. He might have nicked up his, little, his shoulder there. When it, he closed the ground, he closed the gap, made a nice little hit. These guys are popping out here, no question. There's, there's, there's some pet, that's a nice hit. Very nice hit. So Bobby Howard, number 55, made the tackle slip as well. This field is a little bit slick. But they lose five yards. Third down and ten. Adversity here. Quincy Coleman moves over to right corner. Kevin Brooks is at left corner. Third down, Daft will throw. He has a lot of time. He swings it out again. Willie Tate's got a lot of room in front of him, but a great open field tackle again. Jim Cantaloupe stayed with him, and he had to make that tackle. Good job by the free safety 36 Jim Cantaloupe out there. The tight end actually was out leveraging Cantaloupe. He hustled, and he made a great play. Made a good play. They've made a lot of one-on-one -on -one open yep. field tackles, this yep. Galaxy defense. A group that we didn't really talk about in pregame. No. Cantaloupe, you know, he went to West Point. First lieutenant, the Texas National Guard. High speed, low drag, field artillery. Fourth and three, they're going for it, Kevin. Yes, they are. At the 18-yard line, and this one's going to be whistled dead before it gets on the way. That's the end.
That's the end. I think that'll be the two minute warning. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Just thought we missed the two minute warning there for a second. There. <laughs> so the game, delicately balanced, shall we put it? We'll be back in just a moment. You know, Kevin, from where that ball is spotted, it's a 36-yard field goal, but it looks like the claim wasn't going to go for this on yes. fourth down. I, it's a gamble. It's a gamble. Myself, I would kick it, make sure I got that three, so I went into halftime with some points on the board, not that goose egg. I mean, this is, this is definitely a gamble, and they could just be lining up and giving some real quick hard counts to drive the defense off sides. Well, let's see. This is a gamble from the Claymores. Will it work? Will it backfire? They're going for it. Daft feels the pressure. Gets rid of it. Looks for Dion Mitchell. Incomplete. Flag! Flag in the, the end play. zone, too. Huge. Maybe. Look like Kevin Brooks. The corner will be assessed. It was a gamble. It may have just paid off. It may have just paid off, because that could be first down and goal to go on the one. Defensive pass interference. Number one. On the defense. Well, the, the there is no number, there is no number one on the defense. Line, Kevin Brooks down. was down there in coverage with huge. Dion Mitchell. Boy, did that gamble pay off. Huge, huge. Just too much contact down there. Huge play. Gamble worked, paid off. I would have went for the three myself, but they threw it up. Maybe that was part of the game plan to maybe pull a pass interference like that out of their pocket. I don't know. But it worked. Well, they lost their best corner, Jason Bray, last week to a broken arm. He was playing left corner. First down and goal. Scotland, Stecker looking for running room. They're not going to give him a thing tonight. The Galaxy have keyed him throughout this first half. Down and dirty in the trenches. The second quarter's winding down. They know they, know they can settle for three here. The ball's down to it, but they, they need seven. And they know they need seven. So this is some serious stuff going on right now in the trenches. The coaches, What's the offensive the coordinator, and the defensive coordinator back and forth. It's, it's a real battle three. right here. Uh-oh. Some kind of toss, huh? Hurry up, hurry up. Fighting the play Black. clock. Black. Black. Allen in motion. They got the heavy mob out. They give it to Stecker again, and Stecker trying to work his blockers, and again he's wrapped up. Sean Banks, Banks will have nothing to do with it. They strung him out all the way, and he'll lose another yard. That's what you got to do. You cannot let him go north to south. You got to let this guy, you got to make this guy go sideline to sideline. That way you got a chance. As long as you keep him going this way, you got a chance. North and south, they'll kill you. See, they just keep stringing him out. Good pursuit by the Galaxy defense. Good pursuit. I tell you something, we're calling Sean Banks' his number a lot. Yes, yes. You know what? He, the coach says he doesn't say a lot, but he's the leader of that defense. He is the leader of that defense by the way he plays. Aaron Stecker, seven carries, no yards. Third down, this is big. They will throw, there's a flag. It's incomplete, but a flag came in early. They were looking in the direction of Silesio Sanford, but we'll have to wait on the call. Mm. 21 seconds left in the wow. first half. You can feel the tension Beautiful. up here. Beautiful game. Looks like the Claymores are starting to step Prior back. To yeah. Small start, number 77 on the offense. Mm -mm -mm. That's Kelsey. Jason Tenner, the left tackle, who'd Third never down. played offense before Three. last week against Three Amsterdam. Seven. The game clock, the 29 He's just recently seconds. making that transition over to the offense. Been a defensive guy his whole career. Just, just, just budges just a tad bit. It, it opens up the field a little bit more. Set the game clock. And Kevin Brooks didn't know that, seconds. and he did a good job of covering Silesio Sanford on that play. The guy who got burned earlier, which is what gave the Claymore's first and goal. But that ball pushed back to the eight-yard line. This is quite a stand so far from this Frankfurt defense. Correct. They've got to do it again. What do you think? Stecker on the linebacker out of the backfield, flaring or something? Well, they've been looking for it, but they haven't been able to get it. Yeah, they haven't got it yet. Sanford is the motion man. Third down and goal. Daft. There he is, there right he there. Gets Stecker, but he's got a lot to do. Juke Sean, the pursuit's going to get him. No, oh, he made the great tackle. Stecker, would you believe that? I thought the pursuit had him hemmed in, but he had great athletic move. Broke three or four tackles for a touchdown. I thought the Galaxy had him. 
I tell you, Dick Cole won't be happy with that. You've got to give Aaron Stecker a lot of credit. But they should have got him. Good call. I mean, they, that's, that's one of the keys. Get him out there, mismatch on the linebacker. Let him use his ability. He just comes out here. And you'll see, you'll see Sean Banks come out there, take the first shot at him, number 50. He gets juke. Good footing by Stecker. Oh, look at that nice little mid nifty move right there. I, th I thought they had him. They had him dead to rice with like four people. He is so elusive, this man. Someone's nicked up up top around the 20 yard line. Looks like a Galaxy member. Oh, yeah, there's somebody. <laughs> Can't get off the field. That's Anthony Cobbs. Stucker juked him down. Ju that juked will be him down. A charge timeout. Yeah, last two minutes. They are banged first, up in their secondary, the Galaxy. Out. They already lost Jason Bray Get last week as Aaron Stecker celebrates his third touchdown of the season. Well, there's yeah. a touch of the Barry Sanders there because you can keep Barry Sanders quiet for so long and then suddenly he breaks something, and, and Stecker just and did that, it there with his footwork. That's not fun staring across Barry Sanders either. Let's look at his footwork on this. He just breaks him down on two different guys right off the bat. First one was shot banks right there. And then watch this little step right there. And it holds number 20. Nice movement. Kevin Brooks, I, I thought they had him with three, four different guys, and they all came up short. Let's ask the tough question. Is that all down to Aaron Stecker, or should somebody have made a play on the defense there? I think that's just great athletic ability by, by Aaron Stecker. I mean, I've seen that with Barry Sanders. I think I'm a pretty, I was a pretty good player. That guy would juke me, would juke a lot of pro bowlers I know personally. You couldn't tackle a Barry Sanders one-on-one. -on -one. And he showed great athletic ability there. I mean, when he sends that film, when he sends that film back to Tampa, they're going to be smiling on that oh, one. Oh, yeah. Rob Hart has never missed an extra point in his three-year career. This will be his 56th in a row. And it ties the ball game in the last few seconds of the first half. And if it was all Frankfurt in the first quarter, there's been a sea change in this game. Flaggage, about five of them on the field. Oh, yeah, we've got flags everywhere. Could be assessed on the kickoff. But that's what the Claymores needed to do. They were down, obviously, 7-zip. They needed to come back and go punch for punch here, and they did that. That gamble on that fourth down and three worked out for him because of the interference call in the end zone. It just all worked for him. And then Stecker, of course, uses his ability and gets in. Personal foul, number 78, on the kicking team. That's Rome Douglas. He was after the score and will be enforced on the kickoff. What's he getting up to? Well, unexcusable. That is that is two penalties, on personal fouls yes. that Jim Kreiner will be uh, yes. having words about this week, I suspect. You know, Aaron Stecker, they're just confirming what he did. The eight-yard catch is third of the season. Kevin Daft's fifth of the season and ties it up. Boy, he made a lot happen that play. He did. He did. And you could just see he was just playing a level ahead of everybody else around him right there. I'll tell you something, Kevin. I just wonder if that penalty there could come back to hurt the Claymores because the Galaxy will have field position where they may just decide to take a shot at the end zone with Ted White's arm. I mean, they're kicking off from their own 15, for goodness sake. Well, in a game like this, as close as it is, as competitive as this game is, I'd go for it. I'd run the ball up the field as far as I could. I'd take a couple shots at it, get it down close, maybe kick it for three, go for the end zone once. You got, what, 20 seconds left in the half? I'd go. You got nothing to lose. And it's a great competitive game. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take a knee. Why? Certainly not. Huh. Yeah, they're kicking off from their own 15-yard line? Oh, yeah. I'd go. A little bit different from last year, the 42-35 offensive shootout. Blowout, yeah. But this is a good game between two pretty good teams. So Rob Hart will just swing that right leg and line drives it again. It worked from last week against Amsterdam and it's fielded at the 30 by Corey Ivey who gets past midfield and that's what damaged that 
personal foul did yes. for the Scottish Claymores. On the 42-yard line with 14 seconds left. 31-yard return. They got to go. Absolutely. Especially with White's arm. He can hit the end zone oh, from there, absolutely. no problem. I'd go downtown. I'd, I'd go downtown. You got time for two, maybe three plays. They got 14 seconds left on the clock in this first half. Even a sideline completion to stop and get out of bounds to stop the clock could put Kleinman on the field. Three wide receivers, Todd Floyd, top of the screen, Bailey in the slot. Justin Swift is split wide to the right, the backup tight end. And White will just look in the direction of Kendrick Nord. Oh, it was a fingertip away. Should have had it, I think. I thought he should have had that. It looked like it went right through his hands. Nice throw. Nice little throw. Nord had got open. This is the man that they said they want to get in the offense. He's got such big play potential, such great speed. Speed. It was nearly there for him, but nearly not good enough. I think he's looking at him all the way. He's not reading his receivers or nothing. They're just running like four straight fly, fly routes down the field. Well, four. easy to catch it from up here, of course, but you got to say Kendrick Nord could have had that one. Had to I make a slight so. adjustment. Yep. Eight seconds left, second down. Dickie, Dickie, Dickie. White with time Hold again, down. looks in the direction of a receiver, and he can't get Corey Thomas on this occasion. Just good coverage. I think it's the exact same thing. They're running all four wide receivers on fly routes, and they're taking a shot. They're taking a shot at it. You notice they're testing Corey Blackwell on the other corner, Dwan Hawthorne from the Dallas Cowboys. He wasn't tested at all last week. They've not gone anywhere near him this right. week either. They're going for it again. I would too. I wouldn't Two seconds it. left. Yeah. Might as well just whack yeah. it in the end zone. I'd hell marry it. I'd hell marry it. You know, put three wide receivers on one side and just send them all vertical. I bet Corey Blackwell's thinking, hey, what about some other guy? And that's what they're doing. They're walking three wides up top, and they're just going to go vertical. He's going to fade back and throw it up. They put Chris Bain, who's a safety, up at the line of scrimmage. There it is. And White oh, is nice hit. pressure. He is flat. And as he throws the ball, big Michael Mason came in and just clobbered him. And an eventful first half has reached its conclusion. The Frankfurt Galaxy dominant in the first quarter, but all they could do was put up seven points. The Hounds held firm. Then the Claymores came back. We're knotted up at seven apiece. To Frankfurt in Germany on the banks of the River Rhine. We're in the Waldstadion where the Frankfurt Galaxy and the Scottish Claymores have been going at it toe-to-toe -to -toe in the first half. Nick Halling along with Kevin Green up in the booth. And Kevin, it really was your kind of game in the first half. Defense is dominating all the way. Both offenses struggling to get on track. I think Ted White standing in the pocket. I think he's got some happy feet right now. I like the play of, I like the play poise and confidence that, that, that Kevin Dapp in the pocket it shows. Right here, the pass yards are basically the same. Galaxy has 20 more yards rushing the ball. Time of possession, almost the same. There's nothing really that stands out and bites me about those stats. Well, the one player that did stand out and bite me in that first half, I know it bit you, was that touchdown run from Aaron Stecker. No question. I mean, this play had a lot of heart. And he made a lot of things happen just on his own sheer desire and determination and his ability not to be denied. This man was going for it. He, he wasn't going to be denied. I just... I, I like, I, I look for players that play the game with heart and passion and love and desire. And, and, and you know what? We need to come up with like a, you know, Green's passion play of the game or something. Oh, there we go. I, I don't know. Just off the top of my head, you know, just something that we can recognize the guy that shows the most passion making a play. Well, it's Mitchell and Blackwell are the deep men as the second half is underway. They leave it for Blackwell, who picks it up at the 15-yard line and looks to try and find a seam and is dragged down by Kevin McCullough at the 30-yard line. Yeah, you talk about passion. That certainly was the big player that first half. And Kevin Daff managed to keep a couple of series alive with a bit of passion of his own. He'll take off when he has to. And he will, and that's something he wanted to work on over here, is that, first of all, dump the ball off if his number one to recover, the receiver's covered, or run, show his mobility, his athletic ability, get the first down. He's done that. Well, you talked about the need for him to show some poise. That was sure. one of your keys to the game. And he has done that, I believe. He certainly has. He continues to impress in the early weeks of this NFL Europe season, the man from the Tennessee Titans. And he drops and has a lot of time on first down, and it's a drop ball by Aaron Stecker. 
but um, it was interesting in that first half it was it was all Frankfurt offensively in the first quarter the the uh, the Scottish Claymores could only just manage two yards of offense in that first quarter but things turned around in the second and you know we, we talk we about Kevin Daft and what he's we're done, but, but Ted White has shown some glimpses as well. Absolutely, and nobody gave him any credit as far as his scrambling and elusive ability, but I think we saw a couple times that he can run with the football. And he's got a gun of an arm. Yes, bazooka. Second down, Damon Gibson to the top of the screen. Draw, draw play. They look to work Stecker's elusiveness, and he will sprint over the 35-yard line. David Hulsher was there to make the tackle, and... Uh, that's not something Claymore's fans are going to want to see. Slow getting up. I think this kid just makes a difference for the offense of the Claymore's. I mean, I, I think Kevin Daft and, and um, Ted White are real comparable with their abilities, but I think Aaron Stecker really makes a difference for the offense of the Claymore's. Well, Stecker's out of the lineup on third and six. Ben Snell, number 33, checks in. He's a good player in his own right, Ben Snell is. Timeout. Substitution. Edinburgh. Malfunction. First team timeout. So the claim was called timeout, and Kevin Daft scoots over to the sidelines in a hurry to talk to Jim Kreiner. Let's see if we can listen in. Marcus Crandell, the backup quarterback, is in there as they listen to Vince Calva. Al Cowley. The offensive coordinator was called to play, and Kevin Daft says we don't have the personnel. Get in there! Get in there! Go ahead. Call it, call it. Wristband 53. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Regular. Going from the arm, going on the wristband on the arm, play number 53. I tell you, uh, just a little discombobulated on the offense. I mean, they had to call... Did you guys stop the clock for the injury or what? They had to call a timeout earlier in the game for the defense because the defense was discombobulated. Kevin Daft arguing the toss with the officials about the timeout. I think he may lose. Uh, I've never seen an official yet in any sport overturn a decision because a player says, hey. I know. But by God, you got to do what you got to do. You got to stand up for what you think is right. <laughs> I'd have done the same thing, even though it was a losing battle. I would have been up in there. It will be third down and five for the Claymores. This hostile Galaxy crowd gets the whistling going. The decibel level out there really does have to be experienced at first hand to appreciate just how mm. manic these fans can be. Mm. Hey, Mike, Cornell, what up? Coming over and talking to Coach Jim Kreiner and explaining the situation to him on the sideline. Hey, the play hey. clock was moving during the time the game clock was still. Therefore, there will be no charge team timeout to Scotland. Third down. Well, it was worth arguing. Can you believe it? Well, wow, there's a first. Just, I just saw a first. A television first for Absolutely. you right there. The quarterback, he argued his case, yada, yada, yada. It was, it, it was overturned. They got their timeout back. That's one in a trillion, and it never happened again. You can, you, you can do 30 years of this, Nick, and it never happened again. Well, Peter Morelli and Kevin Good. Daft. Good job. They have a good relationship. <laughs> ben Snell empty, empty runs out field. wide right. Ooh, Damon Gibson is the motion man. They will throw from an empty backfield. It's complete. First down for the Scottish Claymores. Just a little hitch and go. They'll move the chains. They pick up seven yards, which is all they needed. First Ricky, time we've Ricky seen Brady, that. the tight end, coming up with it. First time we've seen that, Nick. That little motion out, making it, making an empty backfield. You'll see he's just totally empty, and he just... Nice, very nice. Ricky Brady's made a couple of clutch mm. plays in this ball game. Tremaine Allen remaining back there in the 42. That's a player they think can make some things happen for them as well. Daft feels the heat. Now he rolls one way, now another point. Has time, has a man, and it's complete. And Ricky Brady again getting away from tacklers and he's such a load to bring down he had bobby howard wrapped all over him but he just kept plowing away and picked up 19 yards you want a passion play what about that one absolutely i think just a great job by kevin dad the quarterback moving around showing his athletic ability to get out of tight places making something happen when there was nothing there i think it's just good awareness look he's looking for a receiver he's scrambling around he keeps his vision he keeps his point he points and he just 
throws a knife, and this young man right here breaks a tackle. Good job by Ricky Brady. Breaks a couple tackles. First Brady down in up. Frankfurt territory. Good boot. Play action. Daft. Eludes tacklers again. Gets some blockers in front of him. Now he will take off. And he's still got running room in front of him, and he just skips out after a pickup of 13 yards. And this is a guy that we don't think of as a scrambler, but he is doing some stuff out there. I think Get. you're seeing something here. I think you're seeing that he's taking something on his shoulders. He's saying, hey, if I don't see nothing, you know, I'm going to try to make something happen. And that's exactly what he's doing. He, it's a nice little boot, play action pass. He reverses the field and makes runs for a 10-12 yard gain. The only guy that can get him is Charles Preston and he hasn't got the speed. That's Preston, can't get him. 13 more yards to the 25 yard line. Showing good yeah, poise up in there. The hostility level from the fans Ooh, goes up run. again. Daft will throw, first down, he gets Ooh. clobbered. Charles Preston got him that time and he had help as well. <laughs> I tell you, he may not have got him on the previous play. He made up for it. I think, I think Kevin Depp got hit so hard by Charles Preston, he knocked the wind out of me up here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, oh, mercy. Here we go. Let's watch this young man right there coming in here. Nice little push by move. I just showed that young man that. Oh, that, yeah. oh you're taking the credit for that one, huh? <laughs> Chalk that one up with an assist to Kay Green. <laughs> Number 91 in the booth. Know, he, he was asking for some tips, you know, and I showed him how to do that little push by. I don't know. Loss of six. Second and 16. Draw, Draw play. Stecker, nice move again. Works his blockers. Still goes. Will pick up 13 of those yards. Nice. Very nice movement by Stecker. He started inside that little shake. He bolted outside and picked up 13 yards. You know, I I, I shouldn't make comparisons with Barry Sanders because I, he's a one-off in a different class. Awesome. You're absolutely he correct. does remind me. He, he reminds me. I mean, I've seen him in person. I'm saying, you know what? I've seen this before, and his name was Barry. And Barry was an unbelievable freaking nature athlete. Unbelievable. And this guy is showing some tremendous athletic ability here. The way Stecker stopped and spun on a dime there. Third down and a long three. Daft feels the heat from Preston. He's in trouble, and he just has to get rid of it. Charles Preston will think that's on as even on this series. That, that play just looked discombobulated from the get-go. It looked to me like he might have missed that hand off the Ben Snell going around the corner, and then just didn't know what to do. That was, was kind of weird. So, on fourth down from the 18, make it the 19-yard line. They need it. No, it's going to be Rob Hart and the field goal unit. It takes him forever because he's, everyone's small he's right behind him. Somebody was on his ass. A 36-yard attempt. From Rob Hart, flags come in before the snap. If that's against the defense, that could be a first down. Well, this could be really big. That could be keep the drive alive. Rob Hart not happy. Played his college ball at Murray State in Kentucky, did Rob. They couldn't understand his Southampton accent there. Let's hear from Peter Morelli. Offside, defense, five-yard penalty, fourth down. He said defense, yeah, he but he offense. pointed to the Claymores, and they are being backed up. What and are that, they? Now he's having to readjust. And that doesn't help. False start. Correction. False start. Oh. Correction. Delay of game. Delay. On the kicking team. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. Well, round it up whichever way you like. Rob Hart's cause has been uh, hurt to the tune of five yards. Now it's a 41-yard field goal. Hart, they more or less consider automatic from 40 in. So you're saying this is pushing the edge of his envelope? This is, this is to the edge. He has a long of 42, and he's missed that one. Plenty of leg. Oh. Oh. Well, the penalty was expensive, and we remain tied here in the Volstadion. Throwing the 
newspaper around, which is a tradition here. I don't know why they do it, but they all seem to have fun. Now then, on the field, Frankfurt are looking to try and get something going offensively. Been very quiet since the first quarter, and if Aaron Spe Steckers provides the spark for Scotland, surely they've got to look for number five, Mario Bailey, at some point. He's been kept very quiet. Handoff. Michael Blair spins away from one tackler, can't spin away from the rest, will lose yardage. That'll bring up second and 11. Mario Bailey, a guy that traditionally just murders the Claymores. We, we haven't really called his name all game. I think he's had like one reception for like four yards. I mean, he's been practically non existent the whole game. And if this Galaxy keeps running plays like that little that little draw right there, you're playing right into the, to the hands of the Hounds. Second and long. With Ted White starting to feel some pressure now. The Hounds starting to strain at their leashes. They're coming after White, but White manages to get rid of it. Nice and coverage. broken up. A flag comes in. They were looking for Todd Floyd. And there was contact with Dwan Hawthorne, who they haven't tested in the ball game. Oh, I don't know about that. And that call. goes against Oof. the Claymores. And we need to see that one again because... Hawthorne is disgusted. Looked like he had great position. I didn't see him use his hands on, on, on Todd Floyd at all. I missed that, but that's the call. Pass interference, number 38 on the defense. Automatic, first down. Yeah, let's take a look at this bad boy and see if we can see the penalty. Let's see what you make of this one, Kevin. Let's see here. He's running in front of him right now. Well. I, <laughs> he was in front of him. He was out in front of the wide receiver, running the route for the wide receiver had no hands on him at all, and the flag comes in. If anything, there was a bit of offensive interference. If, if anything, it was offensive pass interference. I don't understand that. Hawthorne read that all the way. But anyway, it's irrelevant. Oh, it's a first down. Yeah. Frankfurt at the 35. White has time. Has a oh, wide yeah. open receiver. Justin Swift picks up first down yardage before he's gang tackled. In fact, it's Werner Hippler, the other tight end. Showing a good turn of speed there. I don't usually associate Werner Hippler with that kind of speed. Just dragging across the middle, underneath the coverage again, just wide open. You'll see him coming here, just dragging across right in there, and just nobody bothers to look for him. Goes right by Phil Glover. Maybe Phil Glover should have carried that. You just can't now that out. is Werner Hippler's second catch of the ball game. We'll talk about that in a minute. Good check That's a significant for the catch. Man kept the drive alive. First down, Frankfurt. Some movement. All kinds of stuff going on at the line of scrimmage there. Justin Burrows, the centre, was in the offensive backfield. Big Noel Scarlet. The snap. Big Noel Scarlet, the beast. Well, we talk about that Werner Hippler catch. It actually gave him his second catch of the ball game, which moves him one ahead of Scott Cooper of the Claymores in terms of career catches by non-Americans. That's his 63rd, Scott has 62. Both guys could big contributors for their teams. And uh, Werner was saying when Scott Cooper got three catches last week and to move ahead of him, he said, yeah, I'm going to have some words with Cooper before this game kicks off. <laughs> he was being facetious, of course. They're both very, very competitive, but they just want to win for their teams. We asked him about this stuff, this competition, and they just want to win. They're not worried about this reception thing. There's a lot of respect there. First down, and five. Handoff, Blair tries to bounce away from tacklers. Will pick up three. And Scott Cooper on the left with Kevin Daft. They haven't been able to get him in the ball game tonight either, the uh, sure-handed receiver from Glasgow. No, we haven't heard much of Scott at all. Sure haven't, they've taken him out of the game. They saw some stuff on film and they say, hey, this guy can hurt us, we gotta take him out. Maybe like Mario Bay. Oh, he, th this guy earned the respect of the league a long time ago. I think a lot of people overlooked him and paid for it. And he's one of those many Europeans that you find around this league that can come in and make a contribution. Blair, they read it. The Hounds had him. He was lucky to get a couple of yards or get back to the line of scrimmage like he did. But he's short of the first down marker. And that brings up third down. Yeah, they've run the ball twice here, two consecutive times and maybe have gotten a half a yard or a yard. Because it was first down and five because and of the penalty. And now it's third and three. Yeah, so they... Big Noel Scarlett in there. Antonio Dingle. They got three down linemen in there now. Three down in the middle. Big third down this for Frankfurt. Trying to keep this drive alive. Coming the game's the still tied up. White looks for Mario Bailey. Touchdown, Frankfurt. We hadn't heard about him. 
now he comes out and fights him. When they need a big play, yes. they go to the big time player. Oof, the crowd is going nuts. They love this guy. This guy is a hero here. It shows it too. He stood up, made a big play. Good throw. You got to give Ted White a little credit. That was a nice little throw. Good adjustment by Mario Bailey on the ball. Well, protection the key again, Kevin. Ball's out of the pocket fairly quickly. What a great catch. Very nice. Mario stayed focused. Ralph Kleiman tacks on the extra point. Bailey routinely makes those catches look so easy. And the six-year veteran has put his team back in front. It's Frankfurt 14, Scotland 7. Mario Bailey has 48 career receptions against the Scottish Claymores. They've kept him quiet for a long period tonight, but you only keep this guy quiet for so long. He's, he's that kind of talent, and, and he's one of those leaders on that offense. And I think Chris Bain's in pretty decent position. Number 46 is just takes an eye off the ball. Mario Bailey just wanted that, that, that rock just a little bit more. Bread and butter catch for Mario. Yeah. I've said it before, Kevin. I'll say it again. It's a mystery to me that this man has never played in the NFL. I'm, I'm not a scout, but I know this guy is talented. I've seen this guy play. And uh, I'm not sure what scouts look for. I mean, I hate to mention Kurt Warner. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Sanford and Mitchell are deep. That's a high looping kick that is fielded by Sanford at the 22, and Sanford's trying to find somewhere to go. And is pushed out at the 35 yard line, 30, 13 yards on the return. Um, Kevin Daft, who led his man, men into field goal range, but they couldn't convert. The penalty really hurt him on the last drive. Suddenly, the Scottish Claymores, who had that momentum going sure. their way at the end of the yeah. first half, suddenly find themselves behind again. It's a test of character here for the Claymores, I believe. It's a test for both these sure, teams, Kevin. Sure, and Galaxy has got to rise up right now, take yeah. Kevin Daft and Aaron Stecker out of the game. The, the, these, right. are, these are two teams that had it easy last week. That's right, cakewalks. And they're both finding it. They're finding out about themselves That's tonight. Right. That's, it's a battle. First down, Daft. The protection breaks, Daft scrambles. Now he puts it up in the air looking for Stecker. Nothing doing, Daft paid the price there. They were coming hard at him. I think it was Henry Taylor got him. I just saw Jason Tinner, number 77, get rolled, ran right over to. Well, let's take another look at Kevin Daft getting crunched. Blue 88, hut. Yeah. See that kind of stuff takes its toll. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I should have said I should have said it if you know or are related to Kevin Daft, you should look away now. <laughs> Second down. The handoff. Stecker gets those moves. He could be in for a big one. He's pushed out of bounds by Cantaloupe. I thought for a split second he was going to be gone, but Cantaloupe raced over there, but 32 yards. That's the ability of that young man to make a play like that. Much needed for that offense to make that kind of play. Nice little play right off tackle. Just absolutely hits that hole. Good blocking up front. I mean, that hole was three yards wide. He hit that really nice. Good, good, good touchdown save tackle by Canada. They needed that spark, Nick. They get him to the 35-yard line. This really is a seesaw battle, this one. Daft goes oh, no. long. Looks for a receiver. Can't quite get him. He was looking for Dion Mitchell, who's another one of those receivers where they've used the P word, potential. Right, the potential. That can be good and that can be bad. Potential. That's, that's the, that's to be fair to Dion, word, that, that, you know. that was not a catchable ball. Right. That was a little pump fake, too, by Kevin Daff, and then went up and laid up just too far. Uh, I mean, this is, a, this is a character check for both teams. No question it is. Because this is a battle. This is a physical battle all the way up and down the line of scrimmage. Second down. Listen to those fans. Stecker. No, it's Ben Snell. And Snell works hard for four yards with half the Galaxy defense wrapped around him. Bobby Howard was in there. Tony Maranto coming up from safety. 
He went flying right second. by, actually. Number 21 came in from a, like a safety blitz from the corner and just went, just went this young man right here. Goes, actually, misses the tackle. Would have been a tackle for loss, three yard loss right there. Just misses that tackle. You hate when that happens. Good elusiveness by Ben Snell. Sanford, Mitchell, and Gibson are the wideouts. Critical play, third down. Critical. Play action. Daft he's steps gone. up. He could be he's running. Run. David Hulsh is after him, but won't catch him. It's a first down for the Claymores, and he's still going. Fashion play again, Kevin. I think he saw so much green out there that he said, hey, I got to take this, because there wasn't anybody within 20 yards of him in front of him. Well, we heard him getting hit. I wonder if we can hear him running for his life. <laughs> Breathing. But I tell you oh, what, he oh got 16 God. yards. Oh He's up to 50 yards on the ground tonight. He's this making a, things happen. It's a dimension I don't think Jim Kreiner realized he had with this, this, this offense. And here he goes. First down of the 15. Daft will hand off to a running back, and Stecker, looking to turn the corner, runs into Tony Moranto. And Stecker, second effort. Well, it actually went out of bounds. Moranto just managed to get him out of bounds. I thought the second effort had got him the first down, but the official marked it as an eight-yard gain. I don't know what Charles Preston, number 97, the right defensive end, just did. He just ran up the field like it was a pass play. Didn't even bother to break down and come back and attempt to make a tackle on Aaron Stecker. He just went vertical like seven yards, and Stecker was gone. That's... Oh, man, just bad play within the defense. Mitchell to the left, Gibson has been very quiet, to the right, second and short. Willie Tate is the motion man, Booted. play action, Daft. He's going to run it. He looks to run again and he takes off, works his blockers, could get in. In! Does touchdown Scotland, Kevin Daft is making things happen out there, seven wow. hours. Wow, he just, him and Aaron Stecker made some great, great athletic plays this series. This young man right here is taking this thing on his shoulders, and he is just making things happen. Let's just watch him here on this little bootleg. Everybody's covered. He says he's tied in. Jim Cantaloupe's got that number 85 covered. He just takes it beautiful. He's just taking it on his shoulders to make things happen. Well, he's thrown five touchdowns. That's his first on the ground. Rob Hart will attempt to tie it up. And does. And we have quite a ball game brewing here in the Vault Stadion. 2.42 left, third quarter. Frankfurt 14, Scotland 14. The travelling Tartan Army enjoyed that one. These guys are all regulars at the Cambridge Bar in Edinburgh. I've had one or two good pre game evenings in there and if that doesn't get me a free drink somewhere along the line I'll be very disappointed <laughs> hey this fella deserves a drink or two as well he really worked hard on that drive and capped it with a seven yard run they got quite a they got quite a running game going on that on that drive between him and Aaron Stecker I think they've got a they've got a potent offensive running attack right now I think this bootleg is a design pass option run and both times he's done that bootleg he's run them both and, and gained some great yardage on both bootlegs he's done well, two years ago, we saw Kurt Warner playing in this league for the Amsterdam Admirals. It really has been a proving ground for quarterbacks consistently over the years, going back to Brad Johnson with the London Monarchs in 95. And Kevin Daft is making a few points of his own here. That kick goes out of bounds from Rob Hart. He that won't be happy with that. Nope. And Jim Kreider will be even less happy. Now you can have a go at the kicker, Kevin. You've been looking for this moment all game. <laughs> He's only five foot eight. I could take it. <laughs> I know. He knows it as well. Well, you know what? That just hurts him. Because now the Galaxy starts at the 40 yard line because of the penalty. That's just like a tremendous return on the, on, you know, on the kickoff return team. It's, it's just, uh, it's, it makes for a short field, Nick. The defense now only has 60 yards to work with. Well, Ted White capitalized last time out, the 15 yard pass to Mario Bailey. Nothing to choose between these two teams through almost three quarters of play. White goes downtown with that big arm. It's tipped. 
Kendrick Nord, the intended receiver. He couldn't quite hang on. Marcus Ray sticking his head up in there, number 22. Covering a lot of distance, that is a strong safety. Nice little break on the ball. Yep, nice break on the ball, sticking his face up in here. Very nice range, ball's bobbled a little bit. Both of them are right there. Marcus Ray from the Oakland Raiders. Hurley Tarver, number 40 in the mix. He calls himself Big Play Ray. Made one there. I got to do it, I got to do it. Who's Second out from the 40. White, picked off. Phil Glover. And Glover is dragged out of bounds. Huge play by number 54, Phil Glover. He read that three-step drop absolutely perfectly. He read that perfectly and broke right into the throwing lane of Ted White. Man, that's just a good read right there by that outside backer. Let's watch this young man right there. Look at that. He's coming out. He reads a three-step, just breaks and cuts off that quick slam. Nice! That's just being honed up. That's watching that extra game film, Nick, we were talking about. These guys got to watch that game film, get a feel of the offense. Another Tennessee Titan with Kevin Daft working the offense and Phil Glover quietly effective sure. on the defense. The Titans are enjoying this one. Yeah, we talked to Phil yesterday. We interviewed him. He's all about physical football. Physical, tough football. I like this look. There's his teammate under center. First down. Can he make him pay? He steps up. He's in trouble. He gets hit. He goes down. Oh, they had Aaron Stecker. Charles Preston was there. Aaron Stecker was wide open. And that may be a case of Kevin Daft just trying to make too much happen right there. He had some success with the scrambling ability earlier. And he may have tried too hard on that play because because Aaron Stecker was was wide open out there. Hey, the hounds are barking on the sidelines. Second down. They got to capitalize on that turnover. This is huge. They got to put some points on the board. Cooper left. Gibson right. Allen in motion. Daft hands it off to Aaron Stecker. He's in trouble. He gets buried. Good pursuit. Great pursuit. Jim Cantaloupe was the first man yes. there. Absolutely but that was a team great. tackle. Yes. Absolutely great pursuit by that defense. They lose five, six yards on the play. That's what you needed to do to knock him out of the field goal, possible field goal range. Good pursuit all around defense. Well, it doesn't matter how good you are, what kind of moves you've got, if you've got nowhere to go. Correct. And when you have a hustling defense like the Frankfurt Galaxy just had, first guy misses, everybody else is on top of him. Now it's third and long. And Daft has a man. It's Stecker. Stecker's got a lot of work to do and will be brought up short of first down yardage by about four yards. Could make it happen that time. Good coverage in the secondary from Frankfurt there meant that Daft had to look for his outlet man. Yep. And they sent Rob Hart back out to try and kick a field goal that would give Scotland their first lead of the ball game in the last few seconds of the third quarter. They may not even get this play off. It'll be 42 yards. He's missed from 41. This is his career long. The clock down to three seconds. They get it off. And can Hart connect this time? Yes, he can. And as the third quarter expires, the Scottish Claymores take their first lead. Rob Hart celebrates a 42-yard field goal that was made for him by Phil Glover's interception. And the Claymores are 17-14 ahead. Phil Glover was with Tennessee last year just to suffer being deactivated on game day most weeks. So this is a young man with a lot of pent-up energy to unload. I like Phil. We interviewed him yesterday. He reads this perfectly, by the way, and just just great read on the quarterback size. But we interviewed this kid yesterday, Phil Glover. And I like to look in these players' eyes, Nick, when I interview them. I like to see whether they're going to blink or not. I didn't see this man blink. This man was focused, and he, and he loves to play physical football. Line drive from Rob Hart. And it's fielded by Michael Blair, who's looking to turn the corner. And he is pushed out of bounds, but Frankfurt will have the ball at the 36-yard line. Well, this is interesting, Nick. I mean, I think Coach Curl is fixing to get a good feel of what kind of team he really has here. Well, uh, both yeah. these coaches will know yeah. after this game. Yeah. There's a little adversity going on right now for Frankfurt. 
Well, they're still rocking and rolling here at the Vault Stadium. We've just started the fourth quarter. Nick Halling, along with Kevin Green, the NFL's all-time sack leader was a four point among field linebackers. Goal. Listen, the correct score four point field goal. To um, well, that's interesting. That's very interesting because that was a 42-yard kick. What? And you can hear what the fans think of it. Now that is going to cause confusion because you get four points in this league for a field goal of 50 yards or more. But that was a 42-yard kick. Okay, I'm not understanding this at this point. I'm not oh. understanding how that was four points as opposed to three. Well, that's two of us. And you can add another 32,000 in the crowd as well. White fires, has his man. Blair, he's gang tackled after a pickup of four. That'll bring second down and six. Well, we mentioned those rule differences. There are some rule differences in this league to the parent league. You get four points for a field goal of 50 yards or more. The 35-second play clock keeps things zipping along. There's no instant replay in overtime. Both teams basically have an opportunity to touch the ball. We've got to take another look at that Rob Hart field goal. How long at some was it? point, I, I, 42 yards. Hmm. Makes you want to go. Hmm. Rob can't kick 52-yard field goals. <laughs> Don't tell him I said that. Second down. <laughs> White with a lot of time, he's broken up. That was a huge play from the Claymores. Blaine McElmurray came over and just lifted a hand up. Otherwise, Corey Thomas could have had that one and run into the end zone. That was close to being snatched. That was close to being just plucked out of the air. Here we are right here. Nice back pedal, doesn't bite on the fake. Good range. That, yeah, nice. And look at Corey Thomas's reaction. He knew. Oh, so close. He's a hand so away from close. six. Yep. Well, the scoreboard does say 18 14. <laughs> White throws. Are they ruling it a catch? Incomplete. Now they're saying it's bobbled. So it's incomplete. Three and out in frustration. They were looking for Corey Thomas again. The Hunting unit and Nick Gallery coming for Frankfurt. Just get a sense that even the crowd has been a bit deflated, which doesn't happen too often yeah. here. Before I was just noticing a, 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 an ocean of waving flags here in the stadium, and now as I'm looking out, everybody's sitting down in a, in a funk. Gallery manages to get the kick away. It's another good one. Damon Gibson fields at his own 16 and tries to tiptoe down the sideline but the first man there was managing to push him out of bounds that was Slavomir Rybacik the Polish wide receiver managed to push him out of bounds flags, Half flags. Yeah, everywhere I told you I'd mentioned Rybacik the you Polish sure wide did. receiver you number 19 sure well Peter Morelli who's confused us all shall we say with the four-point field goal Thirteen twenty left in the ball game. I guess I'm going to have to have that explained to me as well, because the rule does stipulate yeah, over it's, fifty it's yards. 50, correct? We know 50 that. Fifty is four points. And I do believe we know that was a forty-two that yard. Was a forty-two yard. Kick. I believe we we've, we've settled that. So I I guess I don't know. Unless there's been a rule change that we don't know about. That is interesting. They would let us know though. I would hope so. Yeah. Wonder what the. Is it Dick saying it's fifty? No, no, he has to take that off. To the first down. Take the penalty. Take. Twelve men on the field on the defense. The five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Fourth down. Hmm. They still didn't touch on that fourth down, huh, Nick? They've moved on from it, obviously. Yeah, it, uh, it's up on the board. Galaxy 14, Claymore's 18, it's on the scoreboard. And we're looking it up in the rule book here. Our spotter, the Terminator, has pointed out to us that it's in black and white. Field goals of 50 yards or more from the spot kick will be worth four points. That is on page 305 of the NFL Europe League official fact book. And I think the official is now on the phone, Peter Morelli, talking to an official upstairs. We've got all, scores. all kinds of stuff going on here, Kevin. That's the phone call being made. Yep. 
here we go. Something interesting going on here. That they're going to have to correct this, I got a feeling. Because that's, that's well, it, it was eight yards short. Unless, unless there's an optical illusion going on. This will be reversed. You see, this is what we brought the Terminator in here for to do the spotting for us. Outstanding. He gets the rule book out and Job. he tells us before the official. Yes, does. the Terminator. He's a young Terminator, but he's honed up on his rules, by golly. Dirk. Well, I tell you, I think Jim Kreiner will want to terminate the referee here at this one. This one doesn't finish up soon. Wait a minute now. We don't have instant replays if they have it upstairs in the booth. They and now Jim makes a good point that there is no instant replay. Up there. So it's going to be a three-point field. Not, not, a, not a Galaxy guy. No, 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 my guy. I think, I think Jim knows. Well, yeah, I mean. I think he knows he kind of got away with one, and now he really can't complain about it because he got caught. Rob knows. Yeah, he knows. Rob knows 52 yards. They He's really pushing it. They got a feeling they got away with one just temporarily, but it's been brought to everybody's attention, and it'll be rectified. I told you kickers would be the story in this game. You wouldn't listen to me. <laughs> you want me to give him a passion play, too, don't Correction. you? Give him the passion play. The field goal, to, in order to be four points, must be kicked beyond the 40-yard line. Therefore, making a 50-yard field goal. The correct score is 17, 14. There we go. You know, Nick. Well, you know something, Kevin. Uh, I made a rule to myself a long time ago. When I call a perfect game, I'm going to slam an official. So I'm not going to say anything. Right. He's corrected it. It's done with. We move on. I will say this. They're over here working on their skills exactly. as well. Exactly. Okay. And we are not perfect. We're human. At least. We have the situation resolved. And the Galaxy will kick it away again. Gallery, that kick is just hanging and hanging and hanging. And Damon Gibson wants nothing to do with it. And Gallery was unlucky there that it bounced into the end zone. You can't kick him much better than that. Yep, good, good 60 good yards. And with 13.07 left in the ball game, it's the Galaxy 14, the Claymores 17. Let's take a, let's take a gander at at this field goal here and count this up and here we are at 10 and here we are at 20 and right here is 30 and that's 2 32 plus 10 for the end zone that's a 42 yarder yeah yep. rob hart will tell his grandchildren hey i kicked a 52 yarder in the vault stadion and they took it off me <laughs> they ripped me off but it was a 42 yarder yep rob knows it yeah he's smiling he's giggling. everybody knows it. he knows he slipped away with one it was a matter of time before they crept up and get him he should have honed up on it. Back to the game. Scotland with that three-point lead. They now have the ball. This is a crucial drive for the Galaxy defense. And Aaron Stecker bounces around. And he does things that really have your eyes standing out on stalks. That was a five-yard gain. But he beat about three guys. Every time he touches the ball, he's, he's got the potential to make something huge happen out of nothing. Out of nothing. Because he went up in the line there. There wasn't a lot up in there. He bounced it outside and scrambled for about five. Hey, Kevin, there's the numbers. that They've been cranking it up in the second half on the ground. And Dick Curl, who said he's got to have a running game. Look at that one yard in the second half. I believe that one of their goals is wanting to establish the run. Wholly inadequate in that category. Purple 25. Little audible on the line. He sees something up front. Second down. Listen to those fans. Three-step drop. Daft fires. He has Silicio Sanford, who gets away from the tackler, and will pick up first down yardage. And Quincy Coleman is furious with himself. Jim's taken a tumble there, and Jim Kreiner had a bad leg break in go, January. Scott. First down. When a snowplow went into the back of him at his home in Montana. This is the last guy, a, a snowmobile, went right. into the back of him. And this is the last guy that needs a receiver clattering into the back of him, and even he, if it was a Scotland first down. He shattered his right femur, and he's usually walking around with, with a cane. He has a cane. That's not funny. And uh, he's he's a tough he's he's a tough dude standing on the sideline like that. Tough old O-line yes, coach. Sir. First down. Reverse. They go for it. They've got Damon oh. Gibson scooting up the sideline with a lot of space. He goes past Tony Maranto. It's coming past back. Jim Cantaloupe. Runs into his own man. He's eventually tackled from behind by Pernell Davis. But as Kevin Green has said, there's a flag, and that 30 yard run might well be heading backwards. I, I believe I saw 64 Mike Newell come and literally tackle somebody up on the perimeter. And this is coming back. Let's watch the center and see if we see him do something. 
Keep your eye on 64. He went to the left out of the screen. He'll come back in right Holding. here. Number 64 Six, on the right offense. there. Yeah. 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 I believe. Still, first down. Hard to get away with that. That was, that was blatant right there. That was blatant. He knows he got busted. Mike Newell allocated here from the Green Bay Packers. Hoping to follow in the footsteps of Joe Andrusi and Marco Rivera, two offensive linemen currently with the Packers, who played a season of football in Scotland under Jim Kreiner and then graduated. And a guy who overcame a horrible injury in college and hasn't really played since. A herniated disc. Injury. Injuries. Huge. You just can't get hurt in it. So instead of a first down in Frankfurt territory, it's first and long for the Scottish Claymores at their own 25, and Daft will throw from first down, and he's in trouble. Crunched. They came at him every Holding. way. Might be a flag down the field around the 50-yard line. Henry Taylor. Scott Cooper is pointing and dancing around. It may be a holding on Scott Cooper. We don't want Holds the ball too long. Oh, got <laughs> it's crushed. Yeah, it was Kevin Homer and though. Henry Taylor converging. Defensive hold in 29. I'm in front ah, the defensive Number hold against Quincy Coleman. On the defense. Yeah. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. First down. That's huge play. That's gone down well here in the Vault Stadium, I tell you. That's huge play. Scott Cooper was getting mugged on the corner over there. Yeah, letting people know though. The old veteran, Scott, a six year man now. Not afraid to let the officials know. How about the sound of Kevin Daft getting rocked back there? Those microphones on the quarterbacks, I tell you, they frighten me, Kevin. But let me you hear you. things that, you know. Yeah, you know what? These guys are hitting them. Yeah. People want to say that this league isn't on the same physical level the NFL. I disagree. I disagree. I see it. I hear it. I'm watching it face to face. These guys are popping. Are the numbers for Scotland in terms of penalties. That's something Jim Cron has got to address next week. Win or lose here. Stacker. He's got running room. He works his blockers. He gets very close to first down yardage, and I think the extra effort yes. gets him past the tackle of Jim Cantaloupe, and they will move the chains on that one. Sean Banks, number 50, came up inside on a stunt, little inside blitz, ran right by Stecker. you got to have more awareness where the ball is, Nick, when you're coming up inside like that and you're a free hitter. you got to at least smell where the ball is, be able to break down and make a play. He ran right by Aaron Stecker. Ball on the 40-yard line. Scotland doing it on the ground here in the second half. If it's not Stecker, it's Daft. This time it is Stecker again. There's a big hole. Stecker Fair runs down. over Jim Cantaloupe. That was a collision and a half between two very tough guys. And the collision, I think, basically sent them both flying. What we're seeing here, Nick, is the ability of one team in the late part of the game, take control of another team. That is happening in the trenches right now. There's no question this offensive line from the Claymores are opening holes for Aaron Stecker. Ed O'Neill, the linebacker's coach here, looking on anxiously. Jim Candeloup coming up and making the stop. It's a big, big drive this for both these teams. A Scotland touchdown there in the driving seat. The Galaxy need a stop. Ben Snell gets the carry. Snell gets bounced around and he gets punched. Nice. You talk Dig. about hitting that Stan Gibbs. That's, that is a nice, nice tackle. Nice shoulders low, hitting through the target and taking him down. Very nice. That is just great, great tackling. Just a beautiful technique tackle. The back was flat, the whole deal. He hit through the target and took him down. Vince Snell knows that was a great tackle. Stan Gibbs, a 22nd round draft pick. Third down. Daft will throw. He swings it out to Ben Snell, who's got work to do. He gets blockers. He gets first down the yardage and more. Great work from Ben Snell, who's obviously been studying the Aaron Stecker manual. He just absolutely left Tony Maranto's jock on the playing field. That was an absolutely great move by a big man. Ben Snell is a big fella, goes about 245. He stopped on the dime, made a nice cut, put a move on a strong safety. Right there, just look at that. 
Nice athletic move. If, if Aaron Stecker isn't doing it, Ben Snell is. 12 yards for the former Baltimore Raven, a man who had three touchdowns last year for the Scottish Claymores before injury caught up with him. The I word again. The Claymores moving the chains. They're in Frankfurt territory. Snell gets another one. He loses his no balance question. and he's tackled. No Henry question. Henry Taylor. No question, Nick, what they're doing. They're hammering. They're hammering. They're not wanting to throw the ball. They may throw it as a changeup, but they're establishing the physical part of the game right now. They say, hey, we got the we got the galaxy on their heels. We're gonna pound them. Stecker, Stecker, Snell, Snell, Stecker. Wear them down. I've seen teams take over in the fourth quarter like this when they just get that momentum and start rolling. And this is behind an offensive line that Jim Kreiner said he had some concerns with. That's right. That's right. Second down and long. That lot of time. Now he'll throw. He's got eyes dropped. Ooh. Ricky Brady won't drop many. Had him. But he dropped that one. Had him right where they wanted him, Nick. Playing the run, playing the run, playing the run, and then now hit him with the pass. They totally have the defense of the Galaxy totally, totally off balance. And Ricky Brady was wide open and doesn't need to hear it from us. But that was very catchable. And it's so ironic, a guy who is usually sure-handed drops the probably the easiest Handed. pass of the whole ball game. That's right, but he always catches the most difficult yeah. passes. Yeah. And he's caught a couple of big ones in this game as well. It brings up third down. Big, big The Galaxy play. need a stop here. Clock runs less than seven minutes now. There they come. They're coming. Daft gets rid of it. Looks for Sanford. Can't find him. It's incomplete. John Ballantyne and the punting unit will come on. The Galaxy, Kevin, held firm. And Stecker's coming off in some pain. Let's watch a pick up here by Stecker on the outside linebacker, because they were coming with the heat here. Nice little cut, gets him off his feet. Gives Daft a chance to set up, throw the ball. He does it all. And this is a guy that's really unselfish, Stecker is. He'll block, he runs. Valentine goes for oh, it. Oh dear, he's got geez. it all wrong, that is. Oh, dreadful from the Australian. Kicker? Just dreadful. Is that another kick? So, the Frankfurt Galaxy with a three-point deficit, but they'll have good field position when we return. 6.23 left. Welcome back to the Vols Stadion in Frankfurt. Nick Halling with Kevin Green. Well, the offense of Jim Kreiner took a big chunk of time off the clock, but you know, this is still a three-point ball game. It's all there to be played for by both teams. Look at this, 233 yards. That, I mean, that is absolutely beautiful after gaining just two in the first quarter. But you know, despite that imbalance, yeah. just a three-point ball I, game. I, I, the Hounds have really got to come alive right now and take it to this Galaxy offense. This game is not over by any means. Ted White's got to come alive too for the Frankfurt Galaxy. They go on the crowd. <laughs> that was a crunching collision. And I tell you who came second. Dingle. It was Norman Miller who came a distant second in that one. Wow. It's hard to run those draws up in there like that against those two big fellas. Let's just look at this. In, let's look at this inside line right in there. Watch him just stuffing it up in there. Boom, look at that, very nice. Well, first round to the Hounds. You think he'll be passing on second down? White has his man. Miller's got some room in front of him. He gets a crunching hit after a five-yard gain, but the man from the Washington Redskins bounces up and goes back to the huddle. Third down, a big third down coming up here for Frankfurt. I think Phil Glover just came up and just ate someone's grits on that one. I mean, initially that looked like that had some room to go, but there was a serious convergence of that defense and it hit that guy. That was nice. Big play this, Kevin. Yep. Four wide receivers on third down. White has time. Looks for Mario Bailey and just overthrew him. Bailey in one-on-one -on -one coverage with Hurley Tarver. Just couldn't get that. And White, his reputation is for accuracy in the pocket, but 
that one just got skewed away and the pressure was certainly coming i think that takes its toll i mean the man's been getting hit all day and the dogs now are really starting to slobber they're going for the juggler here and i think ted white's having a little happy feet back there and he's feeling the pressure they're coming around look at that yeah, yeah see that's been taking his toll michael mason yeah nick gallery who's punting in contrast to scotland's has been beautiful tonight and a fair catch called for at the 32, 33 yard line, 23 yard line it is, by Damon Gibson. 40 yards there from Gallery. I don't, you know, I don't think these guys up front, the Claymores have had a lot of sacks tonight, but I know what they have had. They've had some showed up good shots on Ted White. And that's that's been a crucial, crucial part of this game. Well, the Hounds, they were big last week. They've been doing some stuff again this week as well. The, as you say, Kevin, not the sacks, but nevertheless, they put enough pressure. Yes, if you can't get exactly. the quarterback, pressurize pressure. him, that'll get him out of his rhythm. That's the next best thing, sometimes even better. First down, up on the ground, inevitably, Aaron Stecker is tackled from behind by Henry Taylor, but the clock continues to run. We're under five minutes here. And this is this is what Jim Crino yes. loves. Control yes. the clock with the running game. I think it, I think the ball right now is definitely in the hands of the Scotland Claymores. I, I think what they got to do is just pound it out, have a nice some nice runs going here, convert a first down to two, and then this thing's going to wind down. The Galaxy has got to come up with a strip ball, force a turnover, do something. They got to make a play now. Their backs are against the wall. There's no tomorrow. It's got to happen now. Second down. This crowd trying to get into it. Nobody has left this place. Booted. Play action. Daft has a man. Big Ricky Brady hangs on this time and picks up good yardage. Close to midfield. Kevin McCullough had the one-on-one -on -one coverage, but 22 more yards for the big tight end. Nice. Bootleg. He rolls out to the opposite direction. He's a right-hander rolling out to his left side. Watch him coming out this way. He squares up, throws a real nice play to Ricky Brady. Right there, squares up. I mean, who thinks a quarterback, a right-handed guy, would come out, you know, to his left side? That usually doesn't happen. He's done it twice already and made big plays both times he's done it. The ball's at the 47-yard line, 3.30 left in the ball game. The pressure on in every sense. They are milking the clock. They are milking it. And Dick Carl can just stand and watch. Boop. Play action again. Nice. And Daft looks, 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 has Scott Cooper a flag, Ooh. great breakup, a flag came in. Corey yeah, Ivey just flag, broke please. on that ball, and Scott Cooper, who wouldn't claim to be the fastest receiver on this team, got open, but Ivey closed the door, but we wait for that flag. That ball may be a tad bit underthrown on that one, because Cooper was about three yards out in front. He was. May have had to cool his jets a little bit to come back and try to get that. But there is maybe a holding call on on this play so well, it was in the defensive second yep. the flag was thrown during the pass, Got him. holding number 24 in the defense five yard penalty that is Corey Ivy first down nice little play action pass just lays it up Scott Cooper may have slowed down just a little bit there good catch up by Corey Ivy but he gets the flag and Dick Curl knows that with yeah, just over yeah. three minutes remaining. Didn't see that holding in. The clock may be his worst enemy. Either that or this Scotland ground game. Back they go. Stecker runs into trouble. Somehow stays on his feet. Tony Moranto can't get him. And again, it, it's, it's, a, it's a run for a loss. And I, I'll probably get told off for saying it. There was, there was shades of Barry Sanders again. Staying alive, hitting, spinning, staying on his feet. I mean, he was knocked off his feet and stayed upright somehow. The only thing I would have I would have said differently about that, he should have just kind of slid down over there on the sideline and maybe stayed in bounds and let the clock continue to run. Yep. He just kind of got pushed out and stopped the clock. So that was just a counterproductive play all the way around. Two-yard loss as well. Speed right on one, right? But Aaron Stecker is so elusive. Tremaine Allen, the motion man. Daft swings it out. Stecker's got it. The alarm bells go off in Frankfurt, but they contain him well. He will get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. They converged on Aaron Stecker there, that defense. I just noticed something. They just got away with the pick play. They put Scott Cooper. 
Franklin. Yeah, I'll actually take a time out to stop the clock. Sorry, Kerry. The first team timeout. Please they, set the clock what, to 2.58. They just got away with the pick play. Basically, Sean Banks, number 50, had Aaron Stecker man to man. Aaron started flaring. Sean started coming over to make the play. The ball was in the air, and then Scott Cooper, number 81, comes up and hits Sean Banks while the ball was still in the air. Can't do that. You're, you're picking man-to-man -man coverage. They just got away with one. I mean, it didn't cost them anything, but man, just a little. Yeah, they got away with one. He's thinking about Jagger coming in behind him. Who's in it, Yankees? Who's it, Yankees? Fellas. Well, there is Scott Cooper. Yeah, here we go. He got away with one. Move, yep. Twin right, 22, X dagger, all one. X dagger. I'm thinking pass when I hear X dagger. <laughs> so, Blue second out on long. Mitchell is white, lined up, top of the screen, wide left. They're coming. Come. The yep. blitz is on. Poise. That rolls right oh, no. just loses his foot. Hell, he's still alive. Stayed alive somehow. Oh. Then they get him at the second effort. Marcus Richter, Richter. the big German, will get the easiest sack of his career and a loss of 13 yards. The man they call the judge, he delivered his verdict right there. Frankfurt. Kind of funny. Second team timeout. 30-second timeout. Talking about Marcus Richter. You know what his last ma name means? Well, you lived over in Germany for a few years, so you're going to tell me. I am going to attempt to tell you. It means judge, and he's studying to be a judge. A judge. So when he becomes a judge, he'll be called Judge Judge. Judge Judge. judge. Isn't that neat? I just, I just... Well, I tell you what, he just sent Kevin Daft away for a 13-yard <laughs> loss yeah. there. He just passed judgment on Kevin Daft for a sack, huh? Kevin Daff scrambling around trying to make things happen. The judge heard the evidence, he saw the evidence, <laughs> and he said, you're going down. He slammed the gavel down, the whole deal. And it means third and, oh, I don't know, 25, something like that. I mean, it's just endless. They have to get to the 38-yard line of the Frankfurt Galaxy. The ball has been spotted on their own at 37. Would you go for the pass go, and get go. the incomplete and stop the clock, or would you run Twin some right, kind of safe draw, go, keep the clock right. running? Maybe they, they use go. a timeout and then punt maybe, the ball away. Maybe get them to burn another one. They've yeah. two. Less than three minutes remaining here. It's still a three-point ball game. Just give me five minutes. Good protection. Daft with a lot of time. Going for Scott Cooper. And broken up, and Cooper turned defender there because Quincy Coleman may have had a shot at that. And Cooper stuck an arm out, and it's incomplete. And Quincy Coleman, who had a pick last week against Berlin, thought he had another one here. And Cooper, I think Kevin did just enough. I think that was a real nice play. I mean, Cooper was open for a second. Ball maybe it hang up in the air, hung up in the air a little bit too long. Now, John Ballantyne, whose problem is consistency, and he's had a couple of horrible ones, but that's one of the better ones, although he he's still it. dying. Need a bounce. It takes a Scotland bounce. But Ballantyne, who can kick so well, he can routinely just move 60 yarders. But the former Aussie rules player. Well, now Nick is fixing to get interested. Oh, yeah, and the minutes. pressure's on yeah. this man right now, isn't yeah. it? He's up for the challenge, and these fans are on their feet They're here in the ball stadium. Look at this, They're, They're all on their feet. They're cheering the man. What are the Howes going to do? 2.33 left in the ball game. You've got 33,000 fans urging the home team on. They've struggled since the first quarter. The Hounds are snarling at the door. The pressure's on Ted White. Who's going to win this battle? White will look to take off. And he slides after a gain of four. Matt Finkis was closing in. That's not what they want to do. They don't want him scrambling like that and getting three or four yards because the time continues to click. I don't think anybody is sitting down in this stadium, Kevin. I can't see anybody. Second down, White will throw. Dumps it off. He has his man. 
Norman Miller will spin close to first down yardage. A second effort may just have got it. I think he's come up short, and we've reached the two-minute warning. And this game that's had nothing between these two teams is so finely balanced. Wow. The Galaxy have the ball, the Claymores have the lead. We've got two minutes left, and we'll be back after this. Welcome back to the Vault study on two minutes left. Scotland with a three-point lead in a ball game that has kept our attention right from that first drive. And Scotland may have the lead, but Frankfurt have the ball. It's ebbing and flowing all day long. It's been an unbelievable physical competitive game all the way down it's to this point. It's been a Kevin Green ball game. I loved it. I was absolutely loved this competitive, na competitive nature of this game tonight. The ball at Frankfurt's 40, movement at the line of scrimmage. All kinds of stuff going on there. Flags coming in. Noel Scarlett certainly jumped early. Hill, of course, claim he was drawn. And the officials will have to tell us who did what. Well, a little hard count by the quarterback, you know, and pull off a pull off a dog like that. Well, that's on third and short as well. If it be goes first, against yeah. Lee Claymores, they'll move the chains. Offside, yep. number 97 on the That is Noel Scott. Good Five call. Good call. First down. The, the pressure goes up another notch. Here's the big fella right here, just getting a little antsy in the Please. quarterback. Ted White. Reset the game clock to two minutes. Ted White had a nice little hard count. I heard him barking all the way up here in the booth. Yeah. It's four down territory from here for you. Oh, all yeah. the way down. What's got? Meanwhile, we have a little delay on the field. All the, uh, the guys in the stripy shirts are all getting together. Correction. Please set the game clock to 1.57. Well, in a game like this, Kevin, every second does count. No question. You know, they say football is literally a, a game of inches and, and just... Thank you. I mean, it's such a short field, 100 yards, that coupled with how fast a game can go and get away from you, and, and time just slips through your fingers before you know it. White on first down. Oh, the throw. He has a lot of time. He has Norman Miller. Miller wrapped up by Chris Bain. A good open field tackle from the backup safety. The former Atlanta Falcon keeps him in bounds as well. Clock continues to move. Hurry up offense by the Galaxy, which is a smart move. Second down and six. Call the game. Call the game. Let's go. Come on. The clock continues to run. 1.30. A field goal will tie it up. They get Miller again. Miller is double tackled. Chris Bain again, along with Matt Finkus. He'll be short of first down yardage. I like what the Claymores are doing. They're not giving anything deep. They're letting the Galaxy complete those short little passes under the zones, driving up and making open field tackles. They need to convert the third down here. They will go for it on fourth if they fail, of course. White, he's going downtown. Incomplete. He was looking for Corey Thomas. No flags. And that's going to bring up fourth down with a minute left. And the ball game could come down to this one play. Correct. The Galaxy have to keep this thing alive. They need two yards. Blaine McElmurray was there to break up the deep ball to Corey Thomas. And so Ted White and his offense have got one last chance. This to keep the drive alive. This to keep the game alive. White pumps, looks, has Mario Bailey. And it's intercepted Dwan Hawthorne. They challenge Dwan Hawthorne. And Hawthorne oh, met the challenge. Oh, huge play. And he covered some ground. He covered some ground. That wide receiver was wide open, streaking down the sideline. And Dwan covered some serious ground. That's a man that started nine games for the Dallas Cowboys last year, including a playoff game. And he's been touted before a ball was kicked in this league as the best corner in the league. And Amsterdam never went near him not last week. Frankfurt have avoided him this week, and now we know why. Coach Crowder, he says this man could be very well be the best 
corner to have ever played the NFL Europe League. That's how good this young man is. Dick Curl knows this one, barring some freak play, is history. The defending champions beaten in their own backyard in their season opener. They'll call one more time out, of course. They have one left, and that's it. Yeah, this is over. Well, Kevin, you said it was still questions to be answered for both these.